Yeah.
<clears throat> Gamers rise up. Gamers rise up. All right, hold on. <clears throat> All right, gamers, let me scroll up. Let me see who the hell is here. Oh my god, Seribot, welcome on in. How the hell are you? Jen Maramar with first place. How are you? Good morning. HT with third and P2 with second. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Nico, welcome on in. Bush, good morning. Imagine DMing me while I'm working hard to set up our collab with P2 and I just get memes from Bush Crank. Not appropriate. Uh, unmodded. Lily, good morning. Juno, good morning. How the hell are you? Maggie, oh my god. Jesus Christ. It hasn't been seven months. Did you hack? Um, Why am I hearing myself? Oh, from John Street. Hold on. Or computer. Hold on. Okay, sorry. That's the problem with having multiple computers in one room. Uh, Maggie, why'd you hack it and make it say seven months? I was watching some Fallout lore video, saw Sodder start streaming, and decided that video was giving <laughs> and threw it all out. <clears throat> Nico, I copied your question in a notepad. If y'all have any questions throughout the collab, just type it. I'll put it in a notepad, and then I'll uh, squeeze it in. Let me just catch up. Xenos, good morning. If I didn't hear the morning, ugh, stretch stuff, she's not awake yet. Rainbow, good morning. Frog, good morning. Silent, good morning. Ivy, thank you for the follow. Welcome on in. Chris, good morning. They were funny though. I actually didn't watch it. Uh, P2, uh, can you unmute your, your Franchi Manchi little mic, please? I guess if I must. Uh, gamers. <laughs> Rise up. Pizza, how the hell are you? Like, did you want to, like, talk about something today? Or... I oh, I'm here for. I thought we could just hang out. Um, how's your uh -oh. week? Yeah, uh, how's your weekend been? Yeah, um, good, you know? Just, uh, playing video games, um, cooking. I went for a walk yesterday. How about, how about you? Um, yesterday I actually worked on a lot of stuff. I worked on some stuff for stream. I did some commissions. Um, I did a little bit of shopping. Um, why do you think that you're better than me? How long do you have? <laughs> Pizza's very quiet. Thank you. I can boost him <laughs> way up. No worries at all. How long do I think I have today or like in life in general? <laughs> P2 is I've... so silent. Damn, damn, damn. You're silent. I that... think I could last to like, you know, at least 60, probably. There we go. That's better. Okay, great, great, great. And he's a little too loud for moi. Do you... So... I mean, do you want to have your drums blown out? Like, Listen, I got to make sacrifices on this stream. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that, guys. Just wear your headphones, but like slightly, like just hold them outside your ears the entire stream. This you're joking, but that's what I had to do with Maggie's stream, uh, Maggie's collab. And then when we were on BRB, she's like, "Yeah, you don't have to live like this. You can you can oh, change no. that." That that's literally how I do all my collabs because I don't oh, want y'all no. to not be able to hear the person. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it is what it is. I I, I need um. Yeah, the Windows desktop. That's what I'm doing now. Um. Yeah, I need to get fancy schmancy headphones where I can do like the the little, you know, the thingy that you were saying. Yeah, that'd be crazy if like, you know, there's a link to a throne or something that people could, you know, put a put a headset on and like fans of yours could purchase or I think that's how that works. Oh my god, that's so crazy. Um yeah. if you have like uh, an, uh like a oh, the joke doesn't work because I can't remember the word. What's it called when you uh, when you have a? Oh my god! Never mind. It's ruined. End the stream. <laughs> no, go on, go on. Jokes are a the funniest. You have to explain them. A referral link. Referral link. There yeah, you go. that was gonna be funny. <laughs> You make me funny. think it's like an affiliate link. Like <laughs> you're making money every single time someone clicks <laughs> on your throne link. Well, that's a that's a wild concept, by the way. Not only are they clicking on your throne link to buy you something, but every time they click on it, you also make money off of it. Oh. Yeah. 
How insane would oh, that wow. be? Oh, wow. Okay, uh, last check. P2 sounds good. My volume's good. Josh, thank you for the lurk. Appreciate you. Uh, music is good. The music, I, I don't want the music to be too crazy. I feel like it gets so overstimulating when it's two people talking and uh, like super loud music. So if the music is on the quiet side, I'm okay with that. Especially since it's going to go on uh, YouTube because quite a few people okay, asked me if I could upload the VOD. So if the music's on the quiet side, I actually don't care. But I just want y'all to be able to hear P2 uh, loud and clear. That's really what I care about. In fact, I'll just mute myself. If you want to just take the lead that's fine i was fine. gonna say <laughs> how much of the like youtube ad money do i get I, I think that's in my contract that we signed together you will but... get 17 cents per 1000 wow that's better than usual actually yeah thank you i appreciate yeah. that i added a little little bonus little bonus <laughs> let it be known that solder takes care of her collaborators jot that down guys you guys <laughs> should be jotting down lots of things today by the way <laughs> Uh, okay, Josh, thank you for the lurk. I appreciate you. Uh, there is a Corsair headset I have that's affordable and has an adjustable volume for headset if you want. Here, I'll write it down right now because guess what? I'm prepared for this stream. I have a Damn. notebook out and I've got my pen here. Proof, gamers. Damn. Proof. I <laughs> now I'm also thinking, I know you do have a pen, <clears throat> but I'm thinking that it's just like a soundboard effect that you put on <laughs> just for <laughs> it's just a pen sound. Like, look how prepared I am. And you're hitting an extra guy. <laughs> Pop tart, good morning. Sada usually makes me pay her. Listen, listen. Um, get a better contract. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta negotiate that. The pen so I got a lawyer. My, my people can talk to your people. We'll, we'll figure this out. We'll figure this out. <laughs> okay, gamers. Uh, if you don't know what we're doing today, um, skill issue it's in the fucking stream title there's a pinned comment in the chat i've made like three announcements on the discord i made a tweet and it's in my tw uh twitch stories like what are you fucking doing but uh the lovely p2 you never told me though so if you oh can, like, explain to me. i think <laughs> everyone else knows besides me actually <laughs> if you can uh if you guys aren't familiar the lovely p2 uh he's the guy that you know talking right now Lovely person, lovely streamer. Um, he typically streams Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays. Um, today is a little bit, uh, you know, it depends on if our stream is going to be eight hours or not. So we'll see if he streams tonight. Mm -hmm. But drop a follow anyways. Uh, great, great, great vibes. Uh, I'm over there a lot. Maggie's over there a lot. Uh, great, great, great vibes. Gaming, just chatting. Um, excellent vibes. Do streams, you know. <laughs> um and uh he's got a ton of experience with uh social media marketing managing etc uh and we're gonna ask some questions today k bomb welcome on in we're gonna ask some questions it is a free uh the um uh, the guys guys i just woke up it, it's been like two <laughs> hours but i just woke this up is your mic check was supposed to be as hard as being like, <laughs> why are we awake? Why are we here? Why do we exist? If y'all have questions, feel free to type it in the chat. I'll paste it in a little notepad that I have open. Um, so if we're like in the middle of answering something, it might be a few minutes, but don't worry about it. Um, I've got my own questions. If y'all have questions, go for it. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, P2. Um, if you'd like to do a better introduction of yourself, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> I'll do my best. I think it is good to just give like a little context. So I'm a silly goofy guy on, on Twitch. I literally do this just for fun to, you know, play games, hang out and talk to people. But my actual day job, um, I do marketing, social media, um, currently doing curation for Meta. But um, if, they, if it's a streaming service, I've probably worked for them. Um, Warner Brothers, Sony, Netflix, Disney, um, God, Discovery Channel, all of them. <laughs> So I've done social or marketing for all of them. So um, I have a little bit of experience, just a little bit. Kind of know what I'm talking about sometimes. Just a little bit. Um, 
And I would like to preface, uh, so yes, we're going to be talking about social media, obviously, today's stream. However, I think the bulk of our questions and the bulk of my questions, uh, I'm going to be asking from an artist's POV. Um, if mm -hmm. y'all are sitting there waiting and twiddling your thumbs and being like, oh, when is Sadr going to ask questions about my extremely niche video game uh, and how <laughs> I get you, you're going to have to ask that yourself, gamer. <laughs> you're going to have to ask that yourself and you're more than welcome to in the chat. Um, but yeah, I, th I think a lot of us artists that are on social media um that's probably gonna be what our questions are about if you have like video game stuff like video game content creation social media you know questions just type it out in chat no worries no worries i think that's also the fun thing is that i hang out with like a lot of art streamers like you or or cup of joe or spree or something but like i don't art at all <laughs> so it's fun to hear your guys' perspectives like from the art side of it because i know like just general like as a brand social media rather than like i'm an independent person mm. and this is how i do it thing so it's fun to hear both sides very interesting very interesting uh p2 how many follow bots should i get that's our first question gamers i would say at least 20. okay okay and all of those 20 are also like those are there's 20 bots but all of those bots are sending you millions and millions of followers okay and we so. all know that the more followers equals uh more fame more popularity and more income right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah the best best trick i can teach you I don't, we can probably end stream after i reveal this trick actually okay. is follow for follow uh <laughs> Excellent. Uh, guys, jot this down. If I don't see the noted <laughs> emotes, you're not taking notes. You're not doing it. Every single person that follows you, you should follow them back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All, all of them. No, don't. Um, I actually would... It's going to be so hard to, like, pick out which is honest <laughs> feedback and, like, which I've just... Which which ones were just... Because we're both just fucking memers all yeah. the goddamn time, yeah. so... Uh, so you guys are going to have to... Um like rewatch this vod like three or four times uh that way he's getting that those 17 cents guaranteed he's getting it uh because mm -hmm. you'll have to like figure out what's the meme and um what's not there, so yeah go on. When, when we are telling jokes there's exactly one pixel on all of solder's stream that changes so you know <laughs> it's a joke good luck finding it <laughs> so nico asked an excellent question mm -hmm. but i think it would be nice to start off with maggie's because i feel like it's a little little more broad whereas nico's is a little bit more mm -hmm. specified so nico i'm gonna skip you because i personally have a vendetta against you specifically um just kidding <laughs> uh maggie says is there any common advice best practices that you hear often that you think are unnecessary or untrue yeah um i think my favorite is so the difference between <clears throat> like a corporate paid versus like your own personal thing if you if you look at like um big companies I, my favorite one to look at because i think it's fucking insane is the hill which is like um uh, like a news publication they post on twitter literally every 10 to 15 minutes all oh day every God. day and when i worked at the discovery channel we also posted every single hour and i'm like that works for a brand but like that's fucking insane for like an individual person to do mm -hmm. so the people people that are like you need to be posting like five times a day whatever no <laughs> you do not <laughs> you absolutely do not um i'd say you should still be making content regularly but when it comes to like you know this is your personal brand this is your safe space this is your own mentality whatever schedule works for you is the best one and maybe that's once a week once every day whatever but um it could it really really depends because like there there is that limit between and i'm being genuine and honest here there's that limit between yes i think you should be posting like pretty often but at the same time like your mentality and like health and 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 desire to keep doing this as a career is much more important to me personally than like whatever you think is going to blow up your page. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So the, the golden rule that I see a lot on social media, like guides, mm -hmm. tips, all that bullshit is consistency is key. And you agree with that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You should be consistent. Okay. Even if it's just once a week, or do you think there is like a sweet uh, middle ground of some sort? I think there is a sweet middle ground. Um, every single uh social page is completely different so what works on twitter is not going to work on instagram it's not going to work on tumblr whatever you're using um 
so you have to kind of know the rules of every single one of it. And sometimes, like, I think Twitter you can post a lot more on, obviously, because it's like, that's kind of just a, a feed that goes on forever and just disappears pretty quickly. But, like, when it comes to, like, it's an example, if you're doing, like, YouTube or something, like, you should be posting a video every single day. That's insane. So, like... I don't know. It, it really depends. Okay, okay. Maggie said- about a production studio or something. Like yeah. That. I don't. Uh, Green, good morning. How the hell are you? Uh, Maggie says, follow up. Are there any specific platforms that are helped by multiple posts daily? Does it matter a little bit more on TikTok compared to Twitter? Um, I've seen the people that are like, I post five times a day on TikTok. Here's here's the funny thing that I always, I always think about. Um, and Sadar, let me know how, how often you've seen this too, sure. of like the people that post like, you know, five, six times a day on TikTok, Twitter, whatever. And they like, you know, they slowly grow over time, whatever. And then there's the person that like does the stupidest content they've ever made. It took them five minutes to make. And that, that is the one that blows up. Yep. It's like 20 million views. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Compared to the other person that's posting consistently. Um, I do. I, I agree. I think consistency is more important than like how often, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. like if your if your pace is to post once a week and people expect that once a week, then that is that is what is best for you. If your pace is to stream three times a week for four hours at a time, like that's going to be better because people know when to look for it and when to check for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and because they're interacting with you more, that means the algorithm is going to show you more, if that makes sense. For sure, for sure. And I feel like that conversation gets tied with uh, streaming a lot. And I, I don't want us to talk about um, streaming too, too much because making mm -hmm. a tweet versus streaming for six hours are two different fucking things. But we mm -hmm. do talk about it a lot in this stream where like, yeah, you might think like, oh, I'll stream seven days a week and I'll grow ASAP and I'll post on Twitter every single day and I'll grow ASAP. But if you are consistently, uh, you know, there or in people's you know uh i eyesight i line uh mm -hmm. two or three times a week and people know when to expect you two or three times a week that consistency is way better for yes sustainability maggie absolutely for your mental health for your growth it's it's just all all around right um mm -hmm. and yeah same thing for social media makes sense especially i'm sure someone will have a question about this so if i'm skipping tell me tell me that it's coming up or something mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. especially if you were like going full-time creator or full-time artist or whatever like it sounds fun and it is fun but like your hobby and the thing you enjoy is now going to become your income source and that completely changes your mentality around it and how you should um not only be thoughtful of like okay so i really enjoy doing this but also i need to you know still do things that are for fun and not always for money mm -hmm. <laughs> so um yeah there's there's a lot of mental health things that we could go into off of that but for sure for sure um concerning consistency all that good stuff chris i'm gonna take your question chris says p2 if i am really bad at regularly posting and twitter terrifies mm -hmm. me how can i plan <laughs> to streamline my social media out output yeah um twitter is fucking terrifying <laughs> I, that is, that is the one algorithm that I'm like telling people to just do whatever right now is Twitter specifically <clears throat> because Elon changes it every single day right now. Mm -hmm. So it's Im almost impossible to judge what the algorithm is at any given point on Twitter right now. Um, that being said, uh, I would say if you are like, I'm scared of it and I don't want to do it, um, you don't have to use any pl platform. If you don't want to have a Twitter, that's okay. Like, it's not gonna kill you. There's so many other, there's Instagram, there's Blue Sky, there's Tumblr, there's, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to use. Um, you'll find an audience <laughs> either way. Um, but, I don't know, I'm trying to, can you repeat the last part of that question? Mm -hmm. or I think yeah, 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 no worries. Right um, it's, it's uh, how could I plan to streamline my social media output? So, um, if anyone doesn't know, you can schedule. <laughs> it's always a good thing. Um, if you know 
that something is going to be live or that you're ready to share it. Um, there's a schedule option on most social platforms. I know Twitter definitely has it of um, say, I want to post a piece of art and I want to do it at 9 a.m. tomorrow. You can literally just schedule it, but you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to look at it. You just know it's live and it's, it's there. Um, there are, I would have to look up exactly what I used to use. There are programs out there that will literally like streamline this process as well. Of you make like one social post and it will post them to all of your platforms at the same time. There's benefits and consequences to that. The benefit is obviously like you only have to do it once and it doesn't matter. The consequences, like I said before, whatever works on Twitter might not work on Instagram um, or, or any social media. So um, just just. I would try to customize it a little bit. Some of those platforms also let you customize for each one, and I would do that strategy if you can. But um, yeah, it's 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 a, a blessing and a curse to have that kind of program to use. Uh, do you think there's... Um, are you seeing much activity on any newer social media platforms? Are there ones that you wish were more popular uh, but aren't, says Nico. Mm, I'm really enjoying Blue Sky, personally. Um, I know, like, when the whole Elon stuff happened, like everyone kind of went to their own places. It was like Mastodon and Hive and all those. Um, I haven't had good experiences with Hive. Mastodon seems to be taken over mostly by like techie people that like to use like GitHub stuff a lot more. <laughs> so I haven't been very active on that personally, but it seems people like Mastodon if, if that's like what you're trying to do is more like, you know, I do programming stuff or I make widgets or whatever. You might be good over there. Um, but yeah, I'm having fun with Blue Sky. It's definitely smaller. Like people just aren't, there's just, it's a new app. There's just not as many people and it's technically in beta still. So there's just not as many people over there quite yet. Um, but don't be discouraged if like you're seeing less because even though like there's less interactions right now, I'm finding a lot of new people that way. And like new people are finding me that I would have never met or seen. So I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with that one personally. Um, not that I'm a social media expert in any way, shape or form, just adding in my two cents from my own experience. I have really been enjoying Blue Sky as well. Uh, yo, thank you so much for the follow, welcome on in. I'm enjoying Blue Sky a lot as well. I'm finding that it's just a, a lot less bullshit on my feed. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm like finding out, I'm like, finding people that have existed in the art space and the Twitch space, but I just never ran into them in, for, for whatever fucking reason. Uh, and I've actually had quite a few people discover me on Blue Sky and then come to Twitch and be like, oh yeah, I saw your art on Blue Sky. I only had that happen like once or twice on Twitter. Um, even though my Twitter is way bigger and I've had Twitter <laughs> way longer. So I think because Twitter is so huge, um, a lot of stuff just gets fucking lost, whereas Blue Sky is still kind of new. It's still, you know, kind of empty. It feels so very early Twitter. Like, it's a lot more just, like, informational <laughs> and social than it is, like, um, a million meme accounts and, like, I don't know. Twitter, sometimes Twitter is just a lot. And I think the, the cost benefit of, like, there not being a ton of people on it is that since there's not a ton of people on it, it means people are more likely to see you because you're on it so i don't know there's i wouldn't i wouldn't like make my only social media blue sky right now but i think it is growing and it's fun the communities there are way less toxic <laughs> so far that i've seen at least there's there's a lot more um acceptance over there do you like how I just said, oh yeah, I've only had uh, like one or two people from Twitter ever check out my Twitch, and then 8-Bit Punk Twitter. drops a follow here from Twitter, Maseo P. King. Just want to give a shout out because I love your art. Your pixels plus any game dev worth their uh, worth their weight in salt equals a hit. Keep up the good work and hoping it all works out financially too so you can keep happily making those pixels dance. 8-Bit Punk, I appreciate the hell out of you. You are too kind and too sweet. Yeah. Um, we're doing after, a... After, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, sorry, you go. No, I was going to say, after that comment from 8-Bit, um, I'm saying, actually, fuck Blue Sky. Never go on there. Twitter's the only way to go. <laughs> Perfect. 8-Bit uh, Punk, we're doing a social media 101 uh, uh, stream. Um, so I, I don't know if um, if you need help with social media stuff. Might be nice to listen. And the VOD is going to be uploaded. So if you can't stay, don't even worry about it. VOD will still be available on my Twitch as well. Um, so if you need to, like, lurk or anything, you're more than welcome. For sure, for sure. Um... 
Juno asked, were things like MySpace viable for marketing at the time or was the internet too niche at that time? At the time? Well, I've been doing social media for 10 years. So. <laughs> at the time, what is what is, was viable 10 years ago isn't necessarily. Okay, so one of my favorite things actually, when I worked for the Discovery Channel, what do you what do you think their most active and like used page was? Um, anything with animals? <laughs> but I mean like social media platform. What was the one that they were focused on? Oh, listen, listen. Um This uh, was 2016 if this helps you. It, I Instagram, there. I would say. No. Uh Tumblr. Tumblr. <laughs> really? That was just like a that, that was just like a shot in the dark. I, I did not actually like think that. When I worked at Discovery Channel, they had 8 million Tumblr followers. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the one that they were focused on. It, it was mostly, I was there to do like YouTube content with them, but the, the videos were also posted on all the channels and stuff, but Tumblr was always the one that popped off the most, always. So that's not true now. I think Tumblr's like, I don't know, Tumblr's in a weird place because they're also just about to get rid of their Tumblr live as well to supposedly focus on the main feed again, but that's so hard to tell at this moment because they haven't activate it quite yet but god i love i love old tumblr though i, I have a soft spot for it but. so uh i'm pretty biased with my social media experiences um i've been on tumblr since i was 18 and i'm now mm. i'm turning 31 in may um <laughs> i fucking love tumblr could be nostalgia mm -hmm. but i'm also just used to it uh in terms of like content creation slash art slash getting commissions and you know uh, uh some traction with game dev and people discovering my work i have found the most success via twitter reddit and tumblr um instagram mm -hmm has just i don't know what's up with instagram i just can't figure it out uh and then blue skies is still a little too new for me to even mention it although the experiences have been great but uh tumblr has been really really nice in terms of like serotonin and just the oh my god people are so nice about my art on <laughs> on tumblr people are so fucking sweet uh whereas mm. twitter and reddit i usually get like nasty comments and dms yeah. but i also get commissions on twitter and reddit so that that's just my that's just my two cents <laughs> i think i think you make a valid point already right there of, uh, i was mentioning each platform is different um i feel tumblr and instagram are better for artists specifically um whereas like twitter is probably better for um more informational or just like text heavy based people um I don't know your thoughts on there well I, I i think reddit go i'm actually not an expert on reddit at all because i've never used it for any of my jobs so i'm happy to hear your experience with reddit too uh concerning reddit um you have to find it's it's hard to like just like summarize reddit because there's so many different subreddits i hear so many uh artists specifically pixel artists that are like oh yeah i posted my art on r slash pixel art and i got flamed to hell and back uh and it's like yeah you posted on r slash pixel art that place is like an actual hellhole. What, what, what were you doing? Like, don't go there. Good God. I fucking hate that subreddit. Um, <laughs> but like whenever I post fan art, I think that's a big key one. Fan mm -hmm. art on the appropriate subreddits. Um, I have gotten so many commissions, kind words, just nothing but sweet uh, sweet people on the D&D subreddits, the Elder Scrolls subreddits, Fallout subreddits, uh, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 14 specifically. Mm -hmm. um, just absolutely lovely. So I feel like once you find those little communities, Godspeed. When, but when it's those gigantic uh, subreddits, r slash digital art r slash pixel art hell no because when it i don't know when it becomes that mainstream it is anybody and everybody uh looking at your art and feeling the need to say anything they want <laughs> um and that includes their dog shit little opinions um <laughs> and unless you have like a uh, actual armor um you're gonna have to read all that and it's it's really discouraging and it'll probably just make you stop posting on reddit and that's not sustainable i got uh, also questions for you i have two questions actually specifically for you one when it comes to like pixel art do you feel like um the people that are toxic are more the like people with nostalgia goggles and they like don't even actually know how pixel art or anything works or like oh my game in on, on my sns looks better than this like <laughs> 
<laughs> Has that happened to you? Or is it just people that are weirdos anyways? Sore. Um, I'm trying to say this delicately. <laughs> I hate other pixel artists. Period. Just kidding. Um, no, if I'm being... Fuck be you, Joe. <laughs> if I'm being for real. If I'm being for real. The last... I want to say 10 times where I've gotten a really nasty response, comment, retweet, repost, however you want to call it, uh, with my art. It was from a fellow pixel artist slash fellow game dev. And that really fucking sucks. I think because, uh, uh, I, you know, let, let me not try and summarize such a complicated thing in such a short little thing as if it's some quick answer. But I feel like 2020 COVID happened. A bunch of people like were like, you know, hey, let me try and make uh, uh, an income with my art. So it feels not it's not saturated, but it feels competitive. Um, and I literally had somebody quote retweet one of my art pieces where I was doing some game dev assets, they quote retweeted it and said, this is really cute. Um, I think it could look a little bit more defined like mine. And they literally linked their asset pack that they were selling. Like that happens a lot where I'll have somebody comment or uh, quote retweet, quote blog, however you want to call it. Um, and not only are they like insulting my art, but then they're plugging in their own stream, their own art, their own shop, whatever. That happens a lot. Um, fucking wild. In ter so so when it's like that, I, it's just, I feel like that's just pure malice. I feel like that's just so unkind and mean. The quote unquote mean comments that I get on Reddit, it's more so from it's more so from a place of ignorance. Uh, and, and I can let that slide uh, or, or on TikTok. I can let that slide. I had somebody on TikTok say, um, why does everything look so tiny? It's like, OK, that that's fine. That, that That's not them like insulting me. That's them genuinely not understanding what pixel art is or or and, and the one that pixel artists always say, oh, it's, it annoys me so much when people say it looks like Stardew Valley. I know it's annoying to get that comment, but people are not being mean or unkind when they say that. They just don't understand what pixel art is. And that's fine. We're in our we're in this little bubble where we're all a little experts on pixel art. Normies aren't. They don't know what the fuck they're looking at. That's fine. Like that. I, I don't mind silly little statements like that. The ones that really hurt me, like come from like fellow artists, fellow game devs. That 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 really fucking hurts. Now I'm also thinking, because me and you are both in our 30s, like, so we're older and have grew up with the, like, old school pixel games, but, like, there's a non-zero chance that those people that are talking about Stardew, that is, like, the only, like, pixelated game they've ever played or seen, too, so. Exactly, like... exactly, 100%, 100%. Um, I, I made a TikTok that was like, oh, let me explain to you what, what uh, pixel art is. You think you've never seen it, but you have. If you played Stardew Valley, blah, 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 and then all the comments were like, oh, that's what it's called. Like, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. And, and that's fine, that's okay, like, no problem. Um, I have another question, but mm -hmm. if you need to, if you want to get to chat's questions too, that's totally okay. Uh, I do want to say, Devor, welcome on in. Angie, good morning. Hope y'all are doing well. I am copying y'all's questions in the notepad. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. Um, and let me just read that message really quickly. I used to hire artists off of DeviantArt when making a comic. It was cool to see who was accepting commissions and just to see their art, but that was 10 plus years ago. Uh, I see the fan art for One Piece a lot. Uh, 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 give me their name. <laughs> uh, at least be nice if you're already going to be so rude as to plug yourself unsolicited. Uh, not getting hurt by the normie comments is also a bit of a skill. Oh. I agree. Someone needs to understand if they want to have a good mental health in that space. It is what it is. Valid, valid, valid. Um, Having a hard skin for social media is a tough thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I would say everyone should do it, but at the same time, it's like, that's almost like saying, oh, you're depressed, stop being depressed. Like, yeah. Kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, not everyone can do it, and that's okay. Uh, what was your follow-up question? Uh, other question for just, like, an art artist specifically, um, I feel like a lot of artists, like, get their start, or when they, like, you know, make a new page and want to start seeing things, they will do either, like, fan art or, like, meme redraws. I feel like the top two that I see just to, like, blow yourself up. Do you feel like that's, like... A fun. I I know like it's not like showing off your your art, but it is like people will get it and receive it mm -hmm, easily mm -hmm. if you do that. 
How funny, because that actually ties back to uh, Nico's uh, first question. So perfect. Look at you. Look at you. Um, so I always say to peeps, uh, yo, Momo, I hope you have a lovely day. I appreciate it. Yeah, the VOD will be available. Absolutely. Have a lovely day. Um, so there's like the quote unquote three rules to being a sustainable uh, uh, freelance artist or however you want to call it is uh, commissions mm -hmm. commissions for cash. Obviously, you got to pay your bills. So you need to do <laughs> commissions. Duh. Uh, fan art for exposure uh, and personal art for sanity. If you mm -hmm. focus on one thing and one thing only, you're going to burn out and you'll quit by the end of the year. 100%. If you only do commissions, yes, your bills are getting paid, but you will get so burnt out and you will hate art. You eventually will. And don't say you won't because I've seen it happen a million times. And if you only do fan art, yo, congrats, you got a million followers on Twitter and all that good stuff, but you're, you're yeah, you got to get a day job now and guess what? You don't have any time for art now. Oopsie daisy. And if you only do personal art, you're really, really happy, but nobody's really seeing it because unfortunately original content doesn't get shared as much as fan art and you're also not paying your bills. So you're really, really happy, but that is a hobby at that point. That's not really you being a freelancer and paying your bills or anything like that. In terms of like meme redraws, trends, things like that. There's a gigantic channel in the Cafe Dot server where we all talk about social media stuff. And this actually came up recently where uh, somebody was like, oh yeah, is it worth like jumping on these little trends, these little meme drawings and, and things like that? It is worthwhile to do if you have the time and energy because A, I do think a lot of them are fun. So if you have fun with it, Godspeed, enjoy. Um, and yeah, they usually get shared uh, and passed around a lot because they're hashtag relatable. It's a cute little joke. It's a cute little uh, nostalgic cartoon that everybody saw, uh, blah, 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 blah. But I, I see a lot of people, they, t they, they take it too far and they make it unsustainable. They're doing meme redraws every single day. They're constantly looking up and seeing what the next trend is. They're prioritizing trends and um, things like that uh, mm -hmm. over commissions, over personal art, over the other stuff. And then they wonder why they can't keep up with the algorithm and why they're burnt out. So you just need to have a sustainable balance, 100%. I'm making stuff I hate. Why do I hate myself? <laughs> 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 Literally. Man, I wonder why I'm so fucking miserable. <laughs> um, so this, this is exactly what I was talking about. Of like, mm -hmm. I know social media, obviously, but like when it comes to like art stuff, I find when you or Spree or anyone talk about it, it's just really fascinating to me personally, because I don't know that shit. It's fun to hear. Uh, so Nico's question was, I often hear people worry about blowing up and having more interactions that they than they can handle. What is a good way to mentally prepare for this without stressing too much about something that might never happen? It seems like blowing up overnight is pretty rare, and yet people are concerned about it a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, I have a funny story about this. Um, this, this leads into the content that you make for five minutes and it does better than whatever you actually do. Um, this is the personal story too. So on my TikTok, um, I usually make just like stream clips or, you know, things, things for gaming and all that. Cause that's mostly what I do. But my TikTok that has the most views, I saw someone talking about, do you know what a door jam is? It's like this, like no metal bar that you put underneath your oh i'm um, so stupid yes i yes i know <laughs> i know what that is i literally googled it yesterday yes uh-huh <laughs> it's like this metal bar that you put under your door and i have one and i literally just like saw people posting about it and i was like hey look i have one here's a story of at my last house someone tried to break into my house and it actually worked like that that i put on tiktok and that has 2.2 million views and everything else i have has like maybe a couple thousand so it's like <laughs> And I made that on like a lunch break within like 10 minutes. And that's the thing that people cared about. Um, I think there is a, yeah, there's a very careful spot of, I wouldn't worry too much about blowing up because it is hard to like go from, there's, there's, there's small blowing up and then there's big blowing up, right? There's, there's the small, like I have, I hundred people and something did well. So now I have like, four or five hundred people that follow me right which is which is cool i'm excited for you and it, it is a different experience to get that but then there's the like i have 100 followers and something i did is going insanely viral and now i suddenly have a hundred thousand followers and it's like oh i don't know what to do now <laughs> that kind of thing i think that's what they're asking about in this question um 
I wouldn't worry too much about that happening because it is pretty rare. But at the same time, there's a lot of steps you should do personally um, when that happens. One, you absolutely should like be okay with like blocking, muting, getting rid of people that just like are there for only that content. And when you like change and try to do something different and they're like, no, go back to do the, do the thing that I followed you for. It's like, no, this is my page. I'm going to do what I want. So go away. <laughs> But then also, um, I would I would say, still be yourself and do what you want. Um, the people that like you will stick around with you and still follow you. And frankly, you'll be happier that you did. And then if you like try to say, for example, like you did a meme redraw, or like a, 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 you did like a one, maybe this is a better example. If you did like a One Piece fan art, and then like a hundred thousand people followed you. And they're like, I just came for one piece and that's all I want. Maybe maybe you don't want to draw one piece all day. And maybe you actually do want to uh, like do your own fan art or do another show or do your own things. Like, and they get mad at you for not doing more one piece. Those are the people you want to keep around anyways. Like, that's just gonna be exhausting mentally. And it also, they're like, I don't know. It tells me that they're like a man child that doesn't understand. <laughs> doesn't understand what it's like to interact with real human beings, so. Um, yeah, block on site. I I think that's an early social media thing that people are like, but if I block people, they won't interact with me or they'll hate me or whatever. No, it it you'll just find other people <laughs> that'll fill that that fill that gap for you. Uh Devor asked, uh, this might be a dumb question, but is there more to dealing with blowing up than just muting a post? with blowing up then muting. so instead of muting the post that blew up i'm assuming they yeah yeah so nico said uh like people are super concerned about it uh and that mm -hmm. they have a lot of interactions on a post that blew up and it's more than they can handle but divor mm -hmm. is like wait what is there to handle can't you just mute the post or can't you yeah, just you, can, you know whatever you can absolutely mute the post um but that doesn't mean people might also like you mute that post and then new people follow you or whatever and then they start interacting with another post that might not even be related at all. <laughs> I had this happen recently, actually. I, I called a game out for using AI art, which I strongly don't support. And then like that kind of blew up for a little bit. And then I muted that just because I didn't, I don't know. I said, my, I said my piece and I didn't give a shit about it after that. Um, and then like people started commenting my other things like, wow, you don't like AI art? And I just, yeah, I just got rid of them. It, it, it is, it is, people will, they don't have, hmm, how can I say this kindly? <laughs> There's people that, I can't say it kindly. There's people that no, don't have right. their life and they want to, yeah. and they want to, <laughs> this, this is their life is to annoy you and be the worst person possible. And even possible. Just get rid of them. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I also feel like, um, and I, I can't say this me, uh, nicely either. Um, I feel like there are a lot of artists, content creators, et cetera, that are just so scared about blocking and just protecting their mental health, protecting mm -hmm. their peace. Uh, and they're like, oh my God, I'm getting so many nasty comments under this post. And it's like, yeah, you can mute it. You can turn off this. You can do that. You can do this. You can do that. You have resources. Uh, so it's not driving your anxiety up to level 500. Oh, but blocking them is mean. It's like, okay, well... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you at that point. Like there are, there are resources. You. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I say something? This is this is a. a, a you talking about this. Hold on, sorry. I yeah, because he no, can't he ahead, can't hear just, you just, talking. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Mm -hmm. Go on, no. you can talk. It's just ironic that you guys are talking about this now because I literally posted a TikTok yesterday and mm -hmm. it kind of blew up, went, went a little outside of my niche, mm -hmm. and I just spent mm -hmm. like the last like ten minutes like blocking and like deleting like sexist <laughs> comments because it was about Taylor Swift and you know that brings up the anti Taylor crowd. Mm -hmm. And like it's that... not fucking hard. It's like incredibly uh -huh. easy. Like even when you have like like uh, it was ninety nine plus comments. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. it took, like five ten minutes tops. Not a difficult that... thing to do. If a creator that happened with it, the door jam. Choosing not to do it. Uh huh. Pete, what were you saying? Uh, John can't hear me, I'm sure. But no, that okay. happened with the door jam video. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it was meant to just be like, hey, I think this is a cool safety device, especially mm -hmm. if you live alone or like, you know, you just don't feel safe in your space. Like, mm -hmm. they work even in, inside a house if you know if your parents are don't respect your space and they mm -hmm. just break your door down. Um, the comments were filled with people just like. You don't need a door jam. Just get a gun and shoot them on the site. Exactly. Like, well, that's 
not a not a real person option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for most human beings. Also, if you don't value a human life that much, I don't want to be around you. So, exactly, like... exactly. You start you start getting exposed to like the normies, and it's like, uh -huh. oh right, I forgot this is how like. This is the other. Uh, yeah, right, so right, my, right. My block terms on TikTok are all like Glock <laughs> and AK forty seven. Like, yeah. All these, like, gun terms now. Yeah, this has actually happened to John a few times. He made uh, another. Well, uh it was the dollar general one yeah i did a video it was a little, a little joke called the like uh dollar stores in 2022 and mm -hmm. i was showing all the used to be dollar items but they're like five dollars four dollars three dollars at the, at the mm -hmm. 99 cent store and it was like a, a, a million what was it was it a million you got no it was like 1.1 it, it, million it was, it was views. Like two million actually. two million I, I yeah i'm gonna get comments on it today yeah also i'm sorry it was a 99 cent store and i was like shopping at the 99 cent store and showing all the non 99 cent items. <laughs> yeah yeah so That's funny though. so i guess if if you if y'all are gonna do like off brand i i guess off brand uh posts there is that possibility that like it could blow up and you could deal with like a bunch of random people that don't care about art in the slightest don't care about your streams in the slightest they're just only there for that one post um but you know what protect your peace if you have to block block if you have to delete comments and and do all that bullshit you do what you got to do to protect your peace because chances are most of those people like 99 percent of those people are there just for that one fucking post so who cares they don't care about your art they don't care about your content they're just interacting with that one viral <laughs> post so fuck it I, I think that's gonna be like our biggest note from both me and you of um yes all these tips of how to you know perform well on social media or how to blow up or whatever like they're all good and nice and they they work they're great but like i will always say that whatever you need to do for your mental health potentially physical health if like your stress manifests in that sure. way um is going to be more important than any tip that we can give you so if you need to block people if you need to get off of social media for a little bit that's always going to be more important to me personally and I think um, a lot of people, uh, content creators, artists, also think like, oh, well, if I block, th thank you for the bonk, if I block this, if I block this person, uh, they won't commission me, even though they said that I should die. It's like, I, no. I, I promise you, they were never, ever, ever going, and I, and that's the thing, that I, I, I think a lot of artists specifically, they think every person is a potential client. Like, no, most people will never commission art. They don't see any value in it. They don't see the point of it. They, 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 they're, they're never going to. And then there's plenty of people that want to, but just unfortunately will never have the budget for it. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Um, so, like, listen like it's, it's the general population yo johnny welcome on in it's the general fucking population if they're being mean or unkind towards you get them out of your space i promise you they will not be miraculously kind and sweet once they give you money they'll probably be 10 times worse <laughs> what a fucking <laughs> joke right i i have two examples i know we still have questions so mm -hmm, if you want to mm -hmm. move on feel free no but... no no go for it one example I literally saw this weekend, I'm not going to call out who the artist was just to, you know, save their sanity, but someone had tweeted at an artist that I like that they hate the way that they do commissions. Like, they just thought that the way the artist, I think the artist only has their commission, they like open commissions for like 24 hours and then close it for the rest of the month because they're that popular. They can do that. Um, and someone was like, I can't believe you only do it. I couldn't catch it in time, blah, blah, blah. And she does it every single month. So like just catch it next time my guy but because of that she like tweeted about why she does it why why everything why she can do that and then also shared that and then immediately in the comments of all of it was like every link other artist that i know is like i'm never gonna work with this guy ever so like it also works in reverse of like if that person is being shitted to you and it's public there's probably a lot of people that are also going to want to block them and that it, I know it feels bad to block people, but you might be helping other people to find people to stay away from. I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you said you had two examples. Oh, my other thing. This is a personal one as well. I had someone that came into my Twitch at one point and they weren't exactly being toxic, but they were... I don't know. I don't remember why exactly they kept doing this. They would come in and they would like call me a different name than my own. And that was their whole bit. And I allow people to say either P2 or my actual name, Mitch, is fine. I don't care. And I have that in my life about. I told them that a couple of times. 
and they they kind of just kept going on of like oh no problem kyle or like no problem kept they just like kept calling me like random not even like weird names just like actual human person names i'm like one i don't like this too this tells me that like you know if if someone truly like i don't it, it, i know it's a bit it doesn't bother me too much i would prefer you call me by my names i like but there are people out there who you know maybe they have a dead name or maybe they like uh, have their name that they have for themselves they've changed it's very very important to them um and that tells me that like you are a person that i don't want this space because you probably don't respect other people's like things and it seems like a weird thing to block someone over but i was like i don't want this person in my community if this is what their whole shtick is and i've told them no multiple times to so stop doing that so yeah um i i think yeah and i feel like that will also tie with streaming stuff people don't need to like be a bigot and say a slur for you to ban or block them right it doesn't have to be that serious it can be just be off and yep. That's it. yep and honestly like a big thing for me a huge thing and it should be for every single person if you ask somebody to stop doing something because it bothers you and they don't stop they I'm sorry, but like the concept of no means no isn't complicated. Get boot that person out. They are not going to be a good friend. They will not be a good client. They will not be a good viewer. They will not be a good community member. It is a mm -hmm. fundamental concept. Just boot them out. Fuck it. They don't have to like do anything nuclear for you to boot them out. You, no, absolutely not. Like I use he, him pronouns. If someone calls me they, them or she, her, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't feel right to me but like because <laughs> i don't think i'm feminine in one in any sense but like if you call me that i'm not gonna be mad but there are people that that is important to them and like if you don't respect that and you don't want to be using those then like get the fuck out of my space <laughs> i don't want you here exactly exactly yep your space your rules exactly read thank you for the lurk enjoy your breakfast um okay shall we fang redeemed a hydrate do you want to do a quick little stretch break oh sure Okay, cool. We'll we're not going to do like words on stream or anything. It's just like a quick like two, three minute thing. Um, I'll go piss really quick. Uh, BRB, y'all. Okay, I'm back. P2, are you back? It's okay if you're not. I am. Oh, Puck. Uh, okay, let me see. Where's my notepad? Solder and P2, thanks a lot for this. Really helpful. Hell yeah. Um. Okay, let me... Let's see. What questions mm. did we skip? 
when me and Sada were getting prepared, she was like, do you have, like, things to talk about? I was like, no, I really just want to answer people's <laughs> questions because I know it's I know it's funny to, like, not get prepared at all. But, like, you know, I know all these things already. I don't really know what you guys don't know. And that's kind of the better way to do this. I also forget that a lot and uh, mm. other streamers do as well. We have to remind ourselves that we are in this little bubble of where we're on Twitch so much. We know so much about pixel art. We know blah, blah, blah. We think it's common sense. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it is not. Like once a month, somebody would be like, oh, does lurking actually help? And I feel like that's like such a fundamental thing of Twitch. And yeah, it is. The bulk of this website are lurkers. But a lot of people don't still don't know that lurking helps a channel. So like things like that, people just don't know. And it's hard for us to know what other people know and don't know. The misinformation too of like, I feel like that story of you can't have like multiple channels up at a time because it doesn't count you has been going around for years now. Yeah. Not true. <laughs> like, at all? I think there's a limit, but it's really high, like five channels. I would have to double check. Okay. But people, yeah. people always said if like you muted a channel, it wouldn't count. And there's literally a Twitch article in their TOS that says it does count if you mute them. So. Okay, I normally have like my lap. I mean, I'm on a laptop, so I can't, I can't have 30 channels open. So I usually stop uh, tabbing open channels around the five, six, seven mm -hmm. mark. Um, and yeah, I always wondered that, but I mean, it's not gonna stop me because like I'll, I'm also like watching them anyways. Mm -hmm. So even if yeah. it's not specifically helping their numbers, it's helping my eyes. So, <laughs> so I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> You're still getting channel points. That's all that matters. Yeah, there you go. I gotta farm those points, guys. <laughs> uh, Chris asked, is it important the time or if it's a weekday uh, when you post? And if so, how do you identify the ideal time or day for you to post? Well, first of all, I didn't know if an ad was playing. I didn't know if you wanted to... Oh, it just finished. It just finished. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, it's like matter on the time of day you post. So this is a loaded question, in my opinion, because... Um, I think a lot of people want you to think that posting on certain times a day, it, it, like, let's say for example, 9 a.m. Eastern for every single person in the world is the best time to post on Twitter. That's not true. Um, there are points in the day that more people are active. I think it really depends on your audience more than anything. So um, say for example, if your audience is primarily from the United States, you should probably be not posting at 2 a.m. <laughs> Eastern time or something, because that's probably not the best time for people to see your content. But um, I still uh, hark on what we were talking about earlier of consistency to me is more important than the exact time. Um, and especially when it comes to uh, just building up your own brand, if people if, you, if people know that you're going to post a new artwork uh, like every Monday or something and whatever time that is at 9 a.m., noon, 5 p.m., whatever, uh, that is more important to building your brand than it is to stay consistent with whatever Twitter or Instagram or whatever wants you to fall. Um, this is where it gets a little more advanced because then you do have to become slightly a more advanced user of social media, um, because I would say the best way to know when to post is actually just look at your analytics, um, because it will be different for every single person. Um, we can we can talk about that, too, if that's something people are interested in. But hopefully, hopefully it's a helpful answer that, like, you don't have to follow what everyone else is doing. It should be whatever is best for you and your audience. So I actually started doing something la uh, yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Would love your input. But uh, I, I've been reading some stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? I really should be using the scheduling uh, mm -hmm. on social media more often to my benefit. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not obvious, my primary audience is uh, American. Um, so, yes, I usually uh, make a post, you know, during EST times when I'm obviously awake. Last night, uh, I decided to do uh, a scheduled post, a scheduled Twitter and Tumblr post mm -hmm. um, once per day for the rest of the days in January. And I did it at like 5 a.m. I think mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah, I, I did it at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. because I know that's like a decent time for uh, Europeans, mm -hmm. uh, 5 a.m. EST. Um, 
Mind you, I'm still going to keep making posts on Twitter and Tumblr uh, when I'm awake, but I just want at least one scheduled post per day just so it can like hit other audiences that I would never be awake for. Um, and sorry, just gonna pause that so we can say hi to these lovely raiders. Welcome on hi, in, y'all. Let me shout you out. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Welcome on in, y'all. Hello, hello, hello. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sodder. My pronouns are she, her. I do pixel art, game dev, and gaming. But today, we're doing a very special stream with the lovely P2, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hi, it's me, P2, a little guy. He's just That's a little it. guy. He's just a little guy. We're talking about social media, uh, marketing, management, all of that. Skellen, I hope you had a lovely stream. Um, uh if you worked on something i'd love to hear about it um we're talking about social media tips um if you'd like to take out that notepad uh and jot down some notes um go for it bon appetit but if you need to write and run that's a-okay -okay as well you do what you gotta do um the vod will be available for anybody that uh is wondering so if you can't stay don't worry about it um <gasps> you made some music yeah what kind oh. i gotta know give me the scoop give me the scoop uh, did, it, did, it, did it have like beats or like harmonies or like other music things? <laughs> if it didn't have sick beats, <laughs> I'm not interested. Just kidding. Uh, How much drum and bass did you have? <laughs> <laughs> Relaxing ambiance, xylophone, marimba, and pads. No sick beats today. If you want to drop um, any of your social media where you post your music, like your, I don't know if you have a Spotify or anything like that, you are more than welcome to. More than welcome to um uh, but welcome on in welcome and thank you for bringing your peeps here i appreciate you or um, what was i saying uh yes because uh i want to be able to reach an audience that uh i don't normally get to reach because obviously i'm either asleep or they're asleep and like i don't really care what part of the world you're in if you want to commission me like why the fuck would i care what part of the world you're in so it's nice to be able to do that scheduling um and like get your work out there but no i'm not waking up at 5 a.m to do that no. either like i'm gonna do what's sustainable and healthy for me but the scheduling is is, is really nice yeah that's the, when i was talking about working at discovery we posted every single hour every single day including like holidays and every you think i'm up at 2 a.m. posting those for my nine to five job? Hell no. <laughs> I'm scheduling that shit. <laughs> uh, so all in all, we should be doing our posts just at like what's a good time for us, what's healthy, what's mm -hmm. sustainable, and then maybe take advantage of uh, scheduled posts if there is a quote unquote optimal time. But I don't think there is an optimal time, right? That, that doesn't if, exist. If the optimal time, I wish there was just like a blanket answer of Yes, 10 a.m. Pacific time is the best time for everyone. It doesn't. No, that doesn't exist. Um, it's not. It's not like TV prime time. However, I do think that's a fun thing to think about. Is what is the prime time of your audience? So, say for example, you know that a lot of people in Germany like to watch your content or or react with you. What what times are they active? They're probably active. You know. In the morning, think think of when people are looking at social media, right? It's like when you wake up in the morning, just laying in bed and like don't want to get out of it, and you're, and you're getting ready for work, all those kind of things. People are probably checking shit. They're probably checking shit when they're you know on transit. Hopefully not driving a car, but if you're you know on a train or a bus or whatever, you're probably checking your phone and seeing what's happened. And also like lunch breaks, and then also when you're going home. So. Um, maybe something after like 5 p.m pacific time as well so like people are home they're relaxing they're winding down for the day they're probably on tiktok just like trying to mushify their brain after a long day of work so um i think those times are cool to think about of, of if you're like i know i know based on my analytics where people are but i don't know exactly what time i would say probably those help you more than anything but uh same deal like it it uh, I, I would keep it close to whenever the analytics themselves say that your people are most active and post a little before then so that people can um get that in their feed if it if it says people are most active at 6 p.m i'd put it at like 5 or 5 30 because that means oh finally they'll have a chance to get it in their feed at the exactly the right time for you yeah, makes sense. Devor brings up a good point. Uh, Devor 
says, can you imagine if there was an optimal time, just every person only posting in a 10 minute window? <laughs> so funny that you say that because uh, I remember looking up uh, my analytics on, I forgot if it was Twitter. Yeah, it must, yeah, it must've been Twitter. Blah, 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 blah. It was like lunchtime EST. But yeah, every time it's lunchtime EST, my feed is fucking filled and packed. And like, wouldn't your post get buried so deep uh not deep or sorry p2 bringing up the fact that like yeah maybe do it a little bit before <laughs> maybe not right at the exact time because yeah it gets flooded like yeah i'm sure i'm sure uh commute time is is popular for everybody yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah we would adjust um so my job at discovery was it's called audience development so it's literally like understanding the audience taking figures trying to figure out what works what doesn't um, and we would constantly experiment with what time should we be posting YouTube videos? When are people watching them? What, what gets us most active? And then also like, you know, what kind of content do people like? But, um, it's a perpetual experiment because all of these platforms are constantly changing their algorithm as well. Um, I would feel, I feel like some of the longer term ones like Instagram or YouTube are fairly solidified. So if you're seeing what works in there, um, it, it probably works for the majority of your time. I would I would like reanalyze every few months or so just to see. But um, but when it comes to like we were saying, like Twitter is such a seesaw right now. <laughs> what what Elon wants to change the algorithm to, I would try to chase that algorithm. I would post whatever you feel comfortable more than anything. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I feel like I don't, I, I don't know when it was, but when Elon's bullshit first started, I saw so many people being like, "Oh fuck Twitter, I'm deleting my Twitter," blah 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 blah, and I was like, "Well, I mean, I don't know. There's plenty of websites that are like dog shit, but they're still alive and active, <laughs> even though they're dog shit. So like, considering this is my livelihood, I'm not just gonna delete my Twitter. Like, I'm gonna mm -hmm. wait a while." And I haven't deleted it. I've been very, very active on it. And like, yeah, like I, I still get a lot of traction and I get people reaching out to me for commissions and stuff. So it's like, I, I, I think not only, so to tie back to what you were saying, you were saying like, yeah, maybe don't like keep following, you know, algorithm bullshit because it's constantly changing, but also jumping on a bandwagon of like everybody being like oh this this social media is uh uh dog shit let's all hop off like maybe that's not a good idea either mm -hmm. that was something i saw i'm i honestly don't i'm not like trying to hide which one i honestly don't remember which one because i have deleted it from my memory got got that got that file and put it in the recycling bin in my brain um there was when people were like leaving Twitter and they're like, go to this one instead. And then that platform turned to be out like some, I don't know, some AI dog shit or whatever. And then people like, oops, I deleted my Twitter, but I have this one now and now it's a worse platform. Like <laughs> that's that's something to be thoughtful about. Um, for sure. For sure. If if you have a toxic relationship with social media and not saying like you were toxic, but like it's just not good for your brain or you just don't want to be on it, but you do want to use it. I would say some good mental health uses of social media is to um, say, for example, like Sauter, if you want to post <laughs> your art and then never check like the feed at all, maybe you just check your notifications and messages, but like you never ever check the actual like Twitter feed at all. That's totally fine. I think that's perfectly okay um because that means not only are you getting your stuff out there to an audience but you are only seeing comments related to you and you don't have to deal with any of the garbage that you might want to avoid on twitter that's totally fine yeah yeah agreed agreed um concerning that i think uh twitter i do check my feed um tumblr i do mm -hmm. blue sky i don't I, I don't interact with anybody in any way, shape or form because it's too much for me to handle. Not that <laughs> not that it's it's toxic in any way, shape or form. It's just way too much. I've got I, I also do my TikToks. I'm trying to do more YouTubes and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I don't it that has not hindered my growth in any way, shape or form. If, if, mm -hmm. if the feed is toxic for y'all, just post your shit and then close the app. I, I, yeah. I yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah, completely agree. Um, let's see. 
So Johnny said earlier, I would love to find out what to do to get my channel, I assume Twitch channel, to grow more than it is. I have usually four to six viewers at most, even with almost 400 followers. Mm -hmm. I would like to tie that in with a question that I also have. So maybe we can answer both mm -hmm. things at the same time. Uh, first, <laughs> Firstly, followers do not equate anything. Followers do mm -hmm. not e does not equal more income, does not equal more viewers or anything like that. Firstly, of course, mm -hmm. right? Um, but my question of what are i guess strategies if there are any to get people on for example twitter to check out my youtube or tumblr to check out my twitch or whatever like off-site mm -hmm. stuff clicks i guess that's called mm -hmm. yeah to your first point i completely agree there are people that have like a hundred thousand plus followers on twitch and i still see them only have like 10 viewers pretty regularly <laughs> so followers definitely do not equate um, people that actually want to come and watch you regularly. Um, there's, there's so many examples I can use, but I'm not going to name people. Um, I would say, so this is a fun one because I know you don't want to talk about streaming, so I'll, I'll be, I'll be more on the social media side of it. Um, it's a fun thing that the ex CEO of Twitch literally said publicly, this is, this is not, you can look this up on Google of, um, if you want to build your like viewership and following on Twitch, you should be posting on other platforms. That's a literal thing that he said. I'm probably not quoting it word for word, but um, and I completely agree. Um, the discoverability on Twitch streaming specifically, um, I'm not an expert on YouTube streaming or Instagram streaming, or whatever, but Twitch streaming specifically, um, discoverability is dog water. And Twitch knows that. They know that for sure. That's why they're bringing in like these like uh whatever the i don't even i'm gonna be honest i almost never use it whatever the reels thing is that's on the top that shows posts for people um they're trying to bring that in they're trying to make the stream together things work they're trying they're trying a bunch of things to improve discoverability the, the shells for like pride months and all that um it's it's better but it's still garbage <laughs> Um, so, uh, the best way to blow up yourself and, and to find new followers to be posting on social media. I personally use a strategy, um, of posting to every social media. I have all of them. Um, I don't think everyone needs to do that. I just, I personally know how to, and it's probably not great for even my own mental health, but that's okay. We don't have to worry about that right now. Um, I would say... Yeah, if you if you want to start growing your viewership, you should be posting clips. You should be posting when you're going live. Um, you should be posting what you're talking about. You should be posting, you know, um, anything you would want for your stream. Like I I do polls all the time of like, hey, I have a new follower goal. What should we do? And I, I came up with a couple of things that I let people vote on. Or hey, I'm gonna do this stream in a week and give people reminders like week one week out five days out three days out the day of like that kind of thing um there's a quite a few strategies for blowing your channel up that way um i feel when it comes to streaming itself the best way to build viewership is not only to build up interactions either through you know interacting with chat themselves and bring them in like we are now with like bringing people's questions or um, giving them things to do with channel points. So you can use Mix It Up, Stringer Bot, whatever, to, to make interactions and fun things for people to do while they watch you. Um, but then also to be just incredibly genuine yourself. And when you do that, the people that I've seen like struggle are people that are like, so just trying to, I saw uh, Hassan do this, so I need to do this for my channel. Or I saw, I don't know, Ninja do this, so I need to do this for my channel. Um, the people that are like just trying to copy the trends are the people that are struggling versus um, the people that are like so genuine self and doing something so creative and so unique um, seem to do better in my opinion. Not not only as like uh, they have a million viewers and, and they're doing better that way, but I feel the people that are doing their own unique things not only are starting to grow up their viewers, but also they're finding viewers that appreciate them for who they are. So that's so good for not only wanting to create more, but also having a healthy community that you can be a part of. Agreed, agreed. Definitely makes sense. Do you think um, going full analytic Andy bullshit uh, and identifying keywords for SEO, all that, do you think there's any value in that? Or do you think that's uh, 
kind of not sustainable. When you are getting started, you should not do that at all. Don't okay. check your analytics at all at the very beginning. Okay. There's no reason to. Not only because you don't, you probably don't know how to read it <laughs> and you just aren't trained on it, but then also um, in order to build good analytics, you have to have data behind it. And if you were, you know, only streamed for a month or two, you don't have enough data to make out. This is, this is just, this isn't even like social media at this point. This is a scientific process of, um, if you were to say, for example, people that are like working on vaccines or something like you aren't just taking like a single test trial and being like, yep, that vaccine works. We're good to go. Like you're doing a hundred billion tests to make sure it's actually safe for people and, and to make sure that the results can be replicated. Um, analytics is a data science. Um, and so you need to make sure that. Okay, people really, really like when I stream Resident Evil, so I should only be a Resident Evil streamer. That might, that's probably not true. They'd probably like other things besides that. And also, you're gonna burn yourself out. I mean, maybe people like Resident Evil that much that they want to stream it all day, every day, and that's fine. But like, I, I personally can't do just one thing forever. Um, and so I I look at my analytics and take it with a grain of salt of like, okay, people like this, this is cool, and this is working. What if I also try this? What if I also try this? And um, it's always an experiment. It's always it's always trying to figure it out. I think it I think it's a good jumping off point, but it shouldn't be like law for your channel, if that makes sense. Do you think there are any uh, tools or websites or anything like that that you would recommend for like the mm -hmm. a average Joe? Mm hmm I think Twitch is built-in analytics are actually pretty good um, because not only does it recommend, not only can you see like when people are, are interacting, they improved analytics incredibly last week. I will give Twitch props where they did it because um, not only does it show specifically what games people have been watching and what they did, it also shows like when people were chatting more during the stream, when people came in more and when they left, which could also tell you like, am I streaming at the right time? Um, and I, so I think Twitch's things are good. I'm trying to remember all the other ones. There's so many like analytics tools out there for Twitch or any social media. Um, I've used Twitch Tracker. I've used Stream Charts. I've used Sully Gnome. Um, I can link all of those if people want it. Social Blade is very, very good, but it does cost money. So, you know, if you're making a career, Social Blade might be good for you and it's, it's worth investing in, but if you're doing this just for fun or just to get started, don't do that. Um, I've heard of like Stream B and Stream Ladder. I've never personally have used them, but I've heard they're good. I don't know. Um, I actually just started using Stream B. Um, I've mm -hmm. always used Twitch's analytics and I agree, it's gotten way fucking better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as you were saying earlier, it's uh, it's a very specific science, and just because I can look at these pretty colors and pretty charts doesn't mean I actually can read it. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned earlier, like, oh yeah, I get a bunch of viewers when I play Resident Evil. I should keep playing Resident Evil because my audience likes Resident Evil. But I, I remember a very specific situation with a streamer friend, who I won't name, um, and they're like, yeah, I, I started playing... I don't know. I'm just going to say Stardew Valley. It's It wasn't Stardew Valley. Yeah, I started playing Stardew Valley and like, oh my God, I'm growing like crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm only going to be playing Stardew Valley because they thought their audience loved Stardew Valley that much. Nope. It turns out it's because when they play Stardew Valley, they can just talk a lot because it's kind mm -hmm. of um, a background game, right? You don't need to like yeah. concentrate compared to a first person shooter, for example. Yeah. Their, their, their community just liked hearing them talk more. That's it. Yeah. They didn't really actually give that much of a fuck about Stardew Valley. So like you can look at these analytics and be like, wow, during my Stardew Valley streams, uh, I got a bunch of raids and people were really hanging out and like talking a lot. They must love Stardew Valley. And you're, you're <laughs> it, yeah, that's just like that. That's kind of the the the, I guess, problem it's, with looking at the analytics like that. You're only getting one side of the story. It's a conversation piece because, like, you could talk about Stardew Valley during it, but it's it's not the main feature. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like it's like when you're meeting someone new and you just have like a mutual like, oh, you're a sneakerhead. I also like sneaker. It's just like a jumping off point, but then like you can't just that is your only connection. <laughs> like people, human human beings are deep and expansive and 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 um usually not just single sided in in their interests and wants. There's a reason that Twitch is most popular category every single year every single month is always just chatting yep it is the most watched for 
ever and yep. probably will always be because people will come on twitch because they want to hang out and talk and literally have human interactions in a pretty safe space like you can literally just leave <laughs> if you don't like what they're having on the channel mm -hmm. but um there's they're trying to find their communities they're trying to find people they like to hang out with they're trying to find people that they can learn from like this um and uh yeah just chatting will always be popular mm -hmm, mm -hmm. agreed if agreed find, if you can find a game i have a friend who also does like they only play dead by daylight and that's it and it's not necessarily because they're like super good at dead by daylight but it's because they can they've played it like thousands of hours so now they can like background it and also reach out interact and have a good time mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent um Maggie says, I almost never watch a streamer for the game or activity that they're doing. I don't even know if I can think of a single channel I follow because of the game instead of the personality. Yeah, 100%. I'm mm -hmm. the same way. I, I like, <laughs> there have been so many times where Cabbage is like, uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, do, do you like this game? And I'm like, mm -hmm. what game? I've never heard of that game. <laughs> and he's like, you've literally watched me play it seven times. And I'm like, oh, I'm not actually paying attention to the game you're playing. I thought you knew that. Sorry, I'm just listening to you. I don't give a fuck about the game. <laughs> I don't give a shit about video games. I'm just here because you're a handsome man. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, I had a point and I fucking lost it already, but I'll, I'll come back to it if I remember. I think that can differ for competitive games. They used to hang around the Smite community mm. and they often get pigeonholed to just only play Smite. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, the the there's definitely that's a completely different point for people that are like pro gamers. Like um, if you are known for Fortnite or Apex or Valorant or whatever, like people are probably going to want to watch your stream for that because you are like a pro team. Mm. Um, but I would say for people that aren't like pro pros, I don't know. I still, I asked my my channel about this um, and I also agree. So I wonder if you agree, Sauter. I don't necessarily, if I'm watching a pro pro, yeah, I probably want to get like, you know, tips and see what they're doing and all that. But if I'm watching someone who is specifically just like, I have, I have streamed Fortnite and Valorant before. I'm not great at them, but like they're fun for me. Like yeah. even even if you were I feel like I watch people play games not necessarily because I want to like learn how to be better at it or I want pro tips. Maybe mm -hmm. I also want to help them out if they're bad at it and I know the game better than they do. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I I kind it kind of agrees into your point of like yeah, the game's cool to have in the background. It's a fun thing to watch, but like I'm not necessarily there for the game that they're playing. Yeah, yeah. And like uh on that point and i don't want anybody to feel offended in the slightest i promise. me i already am i don't even know what you said damn it offended. uh <laughs> the same goes for art streams like mm -hmm. sometimes i'll be watching an art stream and my headphones are in and i'm doing my own thing i'm scrolling twitter or i'm doing my own art and then somebody and then the the the, the streamer will be like Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I've like rendered this too much. What do y'all think? And then I'll be like, oh, I haven't been looking at it for like 45 <laughs> minutes. I forgot what you were drawing. I haven't been paying attention. I've just been listening to you because like it's the same thing. Like I'm just I'm I'm there for you. I don't really care what you're drawing. No offense to anybody, but like I'm th I'm there for you. If you want to draw apples and oranges, or if you want to draw Dead by Daylight fan art, I'm still gonna be there either way. So whatever. I think I think that goes for people are so and I, I've guilty because i'm a perfectionist as well of um when you are starting art or you're starting an instrument or whatever you're, you're just beginning something you're gonna be garbage at it uh -huh. <laughs> more than likely and i think people are really really hard on themselves of like i don't like streaming my art even though i do do art because i don't feel like it's good enough i'm like well one i think your art's good enough but then two um just because you're doing it more you're already improving and i've seen so many people's streams that like they don't feel they're very good but i've been watching for a year i'm like your art has gotten so much better in just a year and you probably don't notice it because you're looking at it 24 7 but i notice it and i think that's fun to watch mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna skip a couple of y'all's questions because i'm more important um but i have a question concerning this conversation so <laughs> Obviously, a stream like this is where we would get some feedback where people are like, oh, yeah, I'm the same way. I also only watch P2 because he's handsome. I agree. How would we on a normal day? How could we get community feedback and see what's specifically working for our social media, for our streams, uh, for our quote unquote brand? Because mm -hmm. the analytical data is sometimes too much to parse and it's too, there's just mm -hmm. too many variables. Um, 
like should we be doing like community surveys and like polls on twitter like you were saying yeah let's 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 break it down so if if let me put it this way when i when i work for big corporations and i need to do whenever i do any marketing campaign you look at the analytics of okay did people click on things did people actually buy tickets do they actually purchase the thing that i want them to do um and so you look at the actual data but then also i send out every single person in this viewership i'm sure has gotten a like survey from a company of like what do you think of this product or like how do you think we're doing that kind of thing i don't know why you wouldn't do that for your own personal stuff of you could check the analytics and also talk with chat specifically of like hey you guys having fun do you like when i do this but then why would you not also allow them to do you know a poll on twitter or an anonymous google form survey or something like um there's probably people that have opinions and they're just like too shy to say it and maybe that's a better way for them to do it or they have an opinion but they don't want to distract from the stream so this is a, a good option to do it um i'm all for i'm all for 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 giving people as many options to give feedback as possible um i haven't personally done a form yet but i do want to um but i even have in discord i have a literal uh, page that is just for hey i have feedback or suggestions is there a game that you want me to play is there something you would like to change about the stream put it there i'm happy to see it um yeah completely agree pog, pog, pog. um i said pog not ha 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 <laughs> cc come on you're not trying today seriously we got two <laughs> people talking come on uh rainbow asked how do you feel about reposting old content tiktok twitter all that good stuff Oh, this is the one I always, oh, I actually love this question. This is what I always bug people about. Um, embrace what you feel is cringe. And I think a lot of people think that reposting or, or liking your own posts is cringe. And that is so from like MySpace days, like you gotta repost your own shit now. You have to, um, not only because uh, it will get more eyes on it, but then maybe exactly what we were saying before of like if you post something at 5 a.m okay cool people that were up at 5 a.m will see it or maybe a few hours after we'll see it but that doesn't mean people at 5 p.m are gonna see it so you should be reposting your shit all the time i retweet almost every single thing i do besides like you know going live post because that wouldn't make any sense um i would say also like all your own things and i truly do do this and i'm sorry <laughs> I, I've gotten comments before because I'll have posts that I like of my own thing and I maybe saw it or you saw it. I liked the post of me going live with you today um, because you're tagged in it so you might be able to see that. Um, it, it feels so cringe. I'm going to be real with you. Anyone who calls you out for doing your own thing doesn't understand social media. I'm going to be honest with you. If they think it's cringe and weird to like and repost your own things, they truly don't understand how algorithms work. Because not only is it re-showing your thing again, but also liking your own thing. And most algorithms will tell it that it has more likes. Even if it's your own thing, it tells the algorithm that it has more likes. Um, and thus it's like, oh, this is quality content. We should be sharing this to more people. Also, if you like stuff on Twitter, uh, from your own things in people's feeds, it'll show that you like something. And that means it's again, more likely to show up in people's feeds from people that follow you. So, so, uh, that. Throughout this conversation, um, because I I do I like talking about analytics. Uh, I talk about mm -hmm. it a lot. I talk to other people about it. I'm always looking up stuff. I'm always looking at those social media marketers uh, on TikToks and watching their videos. So most of, most of the stuff that we've talked about today um, hasn't been like brand new for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been like you know reassuring and clearing up some information for me. I'm not super brand new. <laughs> the liking your own stuff, that's completely fucking brand new to me. I didn't know that's a thing. And yeah, I don't notice that you do that. I like yeah. I see you on my feed a lot, but I don't notice that it uh I don't does it say P2 every, liked this? Every single post that I make, I like my own thing. And <laughs> even if it doesn't, there's people so when people check people's um like personal pages on Twitter, they're actually usually going to the media page more than anything, mm. especially if you're an artist. Mm -hmm. um, but then also people like to check out other people's likes and see what they're looking at. 
and <laughs> maybe it, maybe it seems a little weird that your likes are just full of your own posts. I'm liking other things too. It's not just all me. Um, but the fact that they are going into that feed also means they're again going to see your thing. So um, I think they tried to reduce the self-liking in recent algorithms mm. a little bit. It, it, liking your own post isn't going to do as much as retweeting. I'll okay. be honest with that. Retweeting is more important than liking your own thing. However, um, it does help because, like I said, if, 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 if your post has more likes, it means it's more likely to be a surface to other people. And it's more likely to be retweeted and it's more likely to be shared, which means you're going to get more eyes on it, which is exactly what you're looking for. So, um, yeah, I, I think you should <laughs> usually. Yeah, noted. Hell but yeah. That's that's another mental health thing, too, of like if liking all if going through and liking every single post you make is just like too exhausting. That's OK. Also, retweeting is just like an easy free post. If you're like, I want to post something every single day, but I have nothing for today. Just repost some of your own old stuff. Mm -hmm. Why not? Hell yeah. Uh, it's, it's still your thing. <laughs> um, follow up. OK, so this one's a little. I don't know. Um, so, yes. So let's say I it doesn't affect my mental health uh, too much or mm -hmm. at all to post a lot throughout the day and like retweet all that good stuff. So mm -hmm. let's say I'm doing that fucking constantly. Kind of let's say I'm the next Discovery Channel and it's every 15 minutes and it's not affecting mm -hmm. my mental health. Um, I have followed so many people on social media artists and they are just constantly online and it's just mm -hmm. way too much and i've just straight up <laughs> muted them no offense to any of them but i've just straight mm -hmm. up muted them um because it's like wow you're it's too, it's too much i can't see other people's stuff i'm only seeing yours mm -hmm. um which is probably fine because it's not like i'm their target audience anyways that's fine but do you think um like sustainability and mental health stuff aside do you think retweeting too much or liking your own stuff too much could be um detrimental um yeah uh yeah i'm trying to think of this is also kind of a loaded question like the, like the what is the perfect time to post yeah because i think i think the amount of posting you should do is also highly personal to you mm -hmm. um I kind of I, I pretty much agree with exactly what you were talking about earlier of like three posts a day is pretty good. Anything more than five is probably too much um, for a personal page, at least mm -hmm. but businesses, whatever they're going to post every they would post every single minute if they could. Um, yeah, I, I I don't see a benefit. Um, I would have to look like look at the graph for this. I, I haven't checked in, in a long time, but like I don't see a benefit posting more than those times i had said before of like mm -hmm. when people are active in the morning middle of the day or, or like after work mm -hmm. um because uh, they're probably not checking it if you if you're posting things at you know 10 30 in the morning when people are like actively doing their job and not on social media i don't know what the point is sure. um and and again check your analytics if that is when people are most active on your page awesome keep doing it but um yeah there's there's very unlikely times that people that your main audience is active more than three times a day mm -hmm. um i can't think of a reason why they would be more active than that especially what? when it comes to this is this is a pr thing as well um public relations if you want to do like a terrible post um, so say like you have to lay off people or like you're closing your company or whatever. They do that on Friday afternoons always because that's when yeah. it's more likely to be buried <laughs> and people are less likely to see it. Um, I also feel like weekends are not necessarily super active because people are like out doing things. <laughs> they're going out with friends, they're, they're activities, they might be working in hobbies, whatever. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't post on the weekends or, or Friday at all, but um, I would say, you know, middle of the week when people are actively checking social media and don't have anything better to do, is probably good. For me personally, um, what I have found on my social media and my mm -hmm. analytics and all that bullshit, yeah, Monday through Friday is peak. Saturdays mm -hmm. and Sundays, not so much. That doesn't mean I don't post on Saturdays and Sundays. It's just stuff that I don't care about. Uh, stuff mm -hmm. that, like, it doesn't matter if it gets zero likes, zero retweets, whatever, because mm -hmm. it's a reposted art piece that I did mm -hmm. seven years ago. So who cares, right? That's, so, that's um, yeah, I, I think that's a solid strat. Um, 
What's up, Sam? Welcome on in. Um, weekends when you when you retweet your own shit because then you one don't have to worry about it and two it's it's just free content. Yep. Like, it already you already shown it, so you're not really caring too much if it's gonna blow up again. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Momo asked a question. Uh, I feel like we did kind of touch up on it, but no, no worries. Uh, how do you establish a balance for your mental health and posting on social media when posters can be so aggressive slash depressing? <laughs> I think we kind of touched on that a little bit, where it's like you need to be confident and comfortable with blocking and using uh, blocked terms and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But is there anything else that people could be doing to help balance it a little bit? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's muting conversations. Um, some platforms let you be like i don't necessarily want to mute or block this person but i would like to see less from them that's also an option um i think that works well for the people that like you were saying post a million times a day i i still want to see their content but i just don't need to see it all the time um and then also the algorithm works in a way of like even if you're following someone and you just like don't interact or if you if you stop liking commenting or if you scroll by it really really fast um the algorithm's gonna think oh so you don't care about this person quite as much as you do other things we'll show it to you less automatically um that's how the algorithm works <laughs> so um if you if you like someone but you don't necessarily engage with their stuff you're probably automatically going to start seeing them less too oh uh, give me one second i gotta say bye to john bye john i miss you Hey, Chad, do you remember, did you know that, like, Sauter has, like, you know, social media should be following her on, and, like, a throne, and, like, an itch.io, if you want to see, like, I don't know. If you want to do, like, gift subs, or if you want to, like, he oh, said, you back? Yeah, he said he, he heard you, and he said bye. <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, right. So, I feel like, um... I feel like uh, this happens a lot in Cafe Dot in the social media uh, thread mm -hmm. where people are like, oh, yeah, um, I want to be more on social media, but it's so depressing. It's so exhausting. Mm -hmm. It's so mentally draining. And I feel like there's almost an elephant in the room or there's almost like people are uh, tiptoeing something. And mm -hmm. uh, listen, I'll be the one. I don't fucking care. Some of the most toxic people that I have ever had on my Twitter feed, and I'm, I'm going to specifically say Twitter because I feel like that is the most toxic, so I'll just say that one, mm -hmm. have been fellow pixel artists. Sucks <laughs> to suck, unfollow them. And I think people mm -hmm. are scared to unfollow, they're scared to mute, they're scared to block because, oh my god, what if they notice and then they make a twit longer about me and then they DM me and say, hey, why'd you unfollow me? A, never going to happen. I have unfollowed and blocked so many fucking people at this point it's not happened once i have never gotten a dm that said hey why did you unfollow me it hasn't happened mm -hmm. so don't be scared first of all it's probably not gonna happen buckets thank you so much for the lurk sam i wrote down your question i got you um if it does happen they're probably not a good person exactly anyway exactly <laughs> so. if it does fucking happen you screenshot that shit are you <laughs> kidding me that listen screenshot that's ammo. It for the content you post that <laughs> exactly <laughs> Like, for somebody to do that, it would, first of all, it would be insane for that to ever happen. And then if it does happen, that is proof that you did the right fucking thing. Absolute proof, because who the hell does that? Um, so many main character syndrome people out there. Yeah. Just get rid of them. Literally protect your peace. If that means unfollowing somebody, if that means blocking somebody, sucks to suck. Oh, well sucks to suck like it is what it is so i think um utilizing the tools that social media gives you to protect your peace to not see the depressing tweets to not see the very triggering things that happen on social media uh block mute all that good stuff Util utilize your tools it's not going to come back and bite your ass don't worry it's not going to no. it's it anxiety won't. talking it's not actually going to happen your brain's just being little little tricky little fella mm-hmm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Joe, get that on your sex to suck. Jot that down. <laughs> noted, noted. Uh, let me just get these questions in uh, my notepad. Just a second. Unfollow also, someone. Uh huh. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to. I just. This is just a general comment. Chad has been like so many really good questions. I just want to compliment Chad for a second. Yeah. We usually yeah, yeah. we usually bully and blame Chad for a lot of things, but I just generally want to say you guys have been asking some really good, smart, thoughtful questions, and that's it's been really good fun to answer these. <laughs> 
Uh, 100% proof. I unfollowed someone on Twitter and Twitch, left their Discord because I was protecting my peace, and they blocked me on everything. See, like, it, that, that's just such a, such a nasty, like, response. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's proof that you did the right thing. 100%. It means they shouldn't be in your life, so they probably did you a favor. <laughs> um... Joe, how the hell are you? Welcome on in. Did I miss anything else? No, I, I'm good. Okay. Uh, Sam asked, is Twitter still the epicenter of self-promo in the social media sphere for visual art and otherwise? I'll let you answer the art question because that's much more your category than me. Uh, so for visual art, um, my POV, if you're already sitting down and getting your pixel art formatted whatever in whatever way to post it on Twitter, you might as well. Twitter is still fucking huge. Everybody bitches and moans about Twitter all goddamn day, and yet here we are. Um, I'm still getting commissions off of Twitter. I'm still, like, getting traction uh, uh, on my posts. So if you're already, like, sitting down to do some social media for Twitter, you might as well. Um... I would also start recommending Tumblr and Reddit. I, I recommend those like crazy. I feel like whenever people talk about social media, they always bring up Twitter and Instagram for visual art. Um, I don't know why more people aren't talking about Tumblr and Reddit. I really, I mean, I know why, but <laughs> Reddit's a hellhole. But listen, listen, there, there's some good part. There's some good corners of it. I promise. Um, I'll, you just I'll gotta be find honest, them. I'm, I'm not an active user of Reddit personally. Just. I just I'm on so many other platforms that just Reddit is in the back of the mind. Last I knew, posting your own content wasn't allowed on Reddit. Is that not a thing anymore? Um, there or are. Maybe it depends. On it, the yeah, it, it it depends highly on the subreddit. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, so you saying like, oh yeah, you can't do uh, your own content on Reddit. That has been popul popularized by the big, big, big front page subreddits. Those big front page subreddits, the ones that you are automatically subscribed to when you make a new Reddit account, all of those actual hell, like, hellhole don't go on those <laughs> subreddits there anyways. trust me it is the front page of the internet you don't want to be on those subreddits <laughs> i'm telling you however you go on r slash d d you go on r slash final fantasy 14 they love artists they want to see your content and and what you make r slash stardew valley is, is an excellent one just please be sure you got to read the side rules uh because sometimes they'll have like hey we do uh pr self promo posts only on tuesdays so please don't do any of that on you know a saturday or something like that so just make sure you read that but um i post so much art on reddit uh on so many different subreddits um that that's fine you just gotta be careful about those front page subreddits something to be aware of yeah when way back in the day i used to have my own youtube channel where i was making content a lot more and i would post my videos to things and sometimes they would just like instantly block me from the yep. subreddit just because i was promoting myself and like I mean, it's related. I, I do. I have to like get someone else to share it instead. I don't know, but mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I again, I'm far from a Reddit is like the one platform I do not actively use personally, but um, I do think it's important. I just don't know how it works. Sam says, "P2, are you a pixel artist?" No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an ar any artist in any sense, which is why I'm having Sonder answer all the art questions. I'm just a social media expert. Yeah, Sam, uh, P2 has worked at a ton of different uh, jobs where he's uh, worked on social media um, and he's been the person to post all the uh, social media stuff. So um, he obviously has a... Do, uh -huh. do you want me to do a little intro again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like new people? Okay. Uh, hi. <laughs> I also stream on Twitch, mostly like indie games and stuff, but in, in my professional experience, um, I've worked for pretty much any video streaming service there is. Um, Discovery Channel, Disney, Warner Brothers, Sony, Netflix, all of the above. So um, while my streaming is just a fun hangout, it's a hobby. I don't do it as a job or anything. My like main job is working for all these places. And currently I work at Meta Quest doing VR games. So, Yo, Perrin, welcome on in. How the hell are you? Um, We're nearly at the two hour mark. Do you need to get up, stretch, take a break or anything like that? 
can do a bathroom break real quick. Right. The ads are going to start soon. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to do like a quick, like five minute thing. Um, we do have some questions. If y'all have more, yo, welcome on in, Nate. Yeah, if y'all have like social media questions, feel free to post it in the chat and I'll add it to the notepad. But we're going to do a quick BRB if y'all want to get up and stretch. Yippee! Yippee! Yeah.
Yeah. Jello. <clears throat> oh, Jello. Sam, thank you so much for the gift sub. You are such a silly little goose. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me scroll up. Uh, uh, uh. Just been doing a lurky listen. Make sure to check. Yeah, the VOD will be available 100%. I used my webcam for the first time, pointed at my uh, record player so I could play vinyl records for the first time on stream. It seems to go well. The vibe was immaculate, I agree. Oh, that sounds fun. I'm actually sort of exhausted trying to make rounds with friends I haven't seen in a bit. Sunday video games. Ooh, hell yeah, Nate. You deserve it. You deserve it. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, for our questions. Uh, let's see, what should, where should we go next? Uh, okay, so Momo asked, any tips for balancing posting your own stuff, uh, but also sharing and supporting others versus actually getting off social media and working? I feel like we kind of touched on that a little bit, but I'll leave it alone. I, I think your um, trifecta of personal stuff, fan stuff, um, commissions kind of fits in that as well. Mm -hmm. Like. How often you should be posting that? Oh, um, oh, actually, yeah. To, to to hone in on Momo's question, actually. So, uh, when you obviously when you retweet other people's art or other people's content, it's obviously going to bar uh bur bury your own. Um, should we be like, uh, you know, maybe not retweeting other people's stuff right after we post our own stuff, or is there like a specific strat for that? Mm, that's a oh, that's a really good question. Uh, it's it's the What's, what's the what's the I don't drink at all. But I think I think they call it in, in like the wine industry, like letting it breathe. You just kind of like give it a little minute, mm. you just like immediately. It's also a thing in like cooking, right? Where they tell you to like let the meat rest to, mm -hmm. to get better flavors and stuff. I feel it's very similar in, in social media. You shouldn't be, you know, you post your content and then immediately retweet someone else. That's not going to help you. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. You should, you should give it a second. I, yeah, I usually, I would say a minimum, like an absolute minimum of an hour in between posts for your things. I still, if, 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 um, if I put something I'm really proud of and then I do see something I want to retweet from a friend, I will try to give it a couple hours at least in between but um yeah i would it's called letting it breathe it'll 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 help your feed overall if you don't just bombard put like 20 posts in one hour <laughs> it'll be mm -hmm. hard to see what you're trying to share mm -hmm. yeah makes sense uh maggie said 
you said the question format works best for this conversation because you don't know what we don't know. Is there any secret knowledge that comes to mind that we absolutely wouldn't know? Hmm. That's a really good question. I have to think about that. Um, because again, I've been doing this for so long, so everything feels like I w it's it, it's exactly what you're saying, Sonny. It's hard to know what people generally don't know because mm -hmm. I've just been doing it. I've literally I've been doing social media and marketing for ten years now, yeah. so like I'm just so used to it. Um, I think a lot of things we're talking about is everything that people don't know, just like when you should be posting, how often. Um, what platform is to be using, like all that kind of stuff, because, you know, if, 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 if you've never even like taken the moment of like, do I really need an Instagram? Like if you haven't even just like had that thought at all, that's where I'd start. <laughs> of like, I think I think the earliest thing is to just think about what platform you want to be on, which ones you don't need to be on and how often do you want to use it? And it's 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 completely up to you what you want to share, how often you want to share, and and, and, and where you think your audience is. So. Um, I have like a story time slash yeah. question that I will eventually tie it back to, but I do want to preface uh, that I am not uh, devaluing uh, your uh, social media jobs in any way, shape, or form. Obviously, <laughs> it is much needed for a fucking company, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I, I do. I am speaking from the perspective of just an average Joe, just like we all are. None mm -hmm. of us are companies. Uh, but there's a little bit of drama on the Tiki Talks that I saw where uh, somebody was uh, promoting their social media uh, courses that you could mm -hmm. um, purchase uh, because they had experience in social media, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a bunch of people were like, hey, like you're selling these courses, but um, like, I don't think you actually know what you're talking about because <laughs> you don't have 7 trillion followers, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Why are you charging, you know, so much money when it doesn't even seem like you know what you're talking about? Uh, do you mm -hmm. think there is any value in average Joes like us um, possibly going for uh, uh, paid courses or uh, paying certain social media marketing websites some money per month or anything like that? Do you think there's any value in that? Um, let me, let me phrase it this way. Cause I also get these comments. I, on my personal, like social medias, I don't have a ton of followers and that's on purpose <laughs> because this is my space to just do funny things that I like. I, I do marketing and social media all goddamn day long. Um, and so when I come to like my own personal socials, I'm, I'm purposely like trying things and like not necessarily following the best practices and also just, this is my personal stuff. I'm, I'm just having fun and, and, and probably not blowing up my own things. Um, so when it comes to like, oh, you don't have, you don't know what you're talking about because you don't have a million followers. That's, mm, that's such a, such a, I don't know. It's like, it's like saying someone's art isn't good just because they don't have, um, you know, a bajillion followers that's not true <laughs> there's really good artists that out there that haven't been discovered yet and aren't super popular um when it comes to actually taking a social media class i would really if you know the person you really like what they do you want to learn from them i'm sure there's some value in it um i think you can learn a lot of what you need to know for free via youtube or articles or whatever um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just, I'm so skeptical of people that sell stuff, um, on TikTok and all that of potential scams. <laughs> so I would say just err on the side of caution. Um, just, just be absolutely sure that you want to, you want to support this person. I, I think there's people that are generally doing it because they truly do know what they want, what they are doing and, and know what they're talking about and they truly want to share it. There are definitely people out there who want to do that, but there's also people out there. Uh, I'm not going to name names. I've seen some masterclass pages of people that think they know what they're talking about and it's been garbage bullshit <laughs> that you should not follow. Um, so just be careful. Use your best judgment. Um, and that's why I think all of you should just follow P2 and ask him a million uh, social media marketing questions during uh, his streams. Guys, it's free and easy. Come on. I was going to say, me, me and you already give out advice, even when it's not a collab like this. We were already sitting here doing these for all our streams anyway. So just just follow a, 
a, a streamer that you like and you could probably ask them a question for free and not have to invest money in it. I feel like uh, just to tie back to what Maggie's question was, is there any secret knowledge that comes to mind that we absolutely wouldn't know? I think the average Joe, the average uh, streamer, the average artist already doesn't know so many basic things. And I don't mean uh, that's I'm not I'm not being mean, um, mm -hmm. but like there's so many uh, just uh, uh, holes in their knowledge that just going into a stream and asking a couple of questions is probably going to bring you a lot of value in the first place. I don't think you need yeah. to know the secret, secret stuff um, that only certain companies would know. I, I don't think you even need to know that. When fact of the matter is the average artist uh, still needs to be convinced to repost their fucking art. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like let's start with the basics, right? <laughs> stop, stop feeling cringe. Retweet your shit. It's Literally. so valuable. Literally, uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with someone. If you're just getting started, don't pay for a course because it's exactly what I was saying with the analytics. Like, you should be testing out your own shit first. And then if you feel like, oh, I've reached the limit of knowledge that I could do, I need someone who's an expert to learn better. Um, then, yeah, you can go into it. But there's so many there's articles, there's YouTube videos, um, even like one of my favorite things that I did when I started doing social media was um, there is uh, courses from Google for like Google Analytics and how to read it on YouTube and all that. They're free from actual like Google and YouTube. There's there's courses and you can get a certificate and that is actually incredibly valuable to get those certificates if you're ever planning to do like a job um, as as a social media person. And they're, they're free courses to take. You don't have to pay anything for it and it'll teach you how to read it better. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many sources out there you don't have to pay for, so it's 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 hard to recommend to do that with someone because i'm sure there are people that are really smart and know secrets and stuff but at the same time there's so many free resources mm -hmm. i don't know why you mm -hmm. pay for it i don't know sure 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 um and also like i'm no offense to anybody but i have looked at some of these social media marketers on uh tiktok mm -hmm. and i have looked at their course prices it is really fucking expensive. Like, yeah. I, I think I think you are better, and this is my, my humble onion, I think you're better off using that money and investing in yourself and your own art and your own music um, and your own streams and stuff like that. I, I feel like your money is better spent elsewhere. Yeah, Just there's me. there's things that are easier to learn on yourself, like, you know, how to run a social media page. If you are, like, getting into the deep dive of, like, how to seo a web page or like how to um completely do something from scratch and you want to get it to fifty thousand followers in a month or something that that is that is what you pay those people for they are the experts they're the people that want to do that um and it, it's hard it's hard to learn seo um it really really is but at the same time there's still free resources mm -hmm. there's still ways to read that stuff that you don't have to pay for i don't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a question from Maggie, but I think I'm going to ask Momo's question first. Maggie's had uh, enough questions. Yeah, you're done. You're cut off. <laughs> Time um, out. And I feel like it, it'll all kind of tie together. I, I do feel like uh, this Momo's question um, is a little bit more uh, art centered. Uh, they say, what tips, if any, do you have about different types of passive income? For example, asset packs, wallpapers, emojis, etc. cetera. Um, Momo, uh, obviously I'm a pixel artist. The bulk of my income last year came from Final Fantasy XIV Discord emotes. Um, I posted it on uh, the Final Fantasy XIV subreddits and I made a shit ton of money and it was really, really nice. Um, it was really, really great because I only drew the emotes once, obviously, and then it's a little pack and then it's posted on my Kofi and then people go to my Kofi at, because they want the emotes, obviously, and then they're buying other stuff and then they're looking and then they're browsing and blah, 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 blah. And I see their usernames on Kofi and then I see them lurking in my streams um, and then I see that they maybe sub offline and I'll never call them out, of course, <laughs> but... Um, so for in terms of passive income, I am not an expert in any way, shape or form, but I feel like I am getting better. And I feel like for me, Twitch has been so fucking helpful with stuff like that, more helpful than any social media. Um, but P2, what are your thoughts on people uh, checking out asset packs and your coffee shop and, and your merch store via your social media? 
Yeah, this is one of those other questions that like I feel like an artist is better to answer because all of vast majority of my income, I, I make very, very little on, t on Twitch and I purposely do that because this isn't my job. My, my major income is my day job, <laughs> my nine to five. So um, it's, it's a little difficult to me. I, I truly do believe that even if you have a nine to five, you should probably have some sort of secondary income if you can. Um, Kofi is great. Uh, I know Patreon is hit or miss because of how much they take off of that. Um, and then, uh, you know, I know a lot of people that make a shit ton of money off of Fiverr. I know a lot of people that make um, a lot of money off their just Discord and, and they have packs in there that they want to share. Um, I think it's valuable to have multiple income sources, especially if it's a passive one, like you were saying, like you made so people that have to do you know commissions obviously that's active work that you need to do if you can make a a pack that you think people will find valuable that is like the gold mine right there right because you made it once and then people have to pay money to get into it <laughs> in order to get it um yeah i think twitch and youtube can be income sources but um if you can have something that's a direct line uh, like like an emo pack or something that's that's probably the easiest one for you to to do I'm not saying like it's easy to set up but like it's once it's done it's done right <laughs> like you don't have to you don't have to touch that ever again so yeah 100 you know. I'm um, sorry I'm not an expert on this question specifically but I'm trying to think of no more you're so good for people you're so good I feel like um if you are an artist, um, you need to put all of your eggs in many, 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 many different baskets. You cannot just mm -hmm. be 100% on Twitch and just only pay your bills off of Twitch because the mm -hmm. second you get COVID and then you're off for a week or two, um, yeah, you kind of lose a little bit, a lot of your income because you weren't streaming for those two weeks and that's half a month. Um, yes. Like, you need to be doing stuff on your social media. You need to be doing stuff on your Ko-fi, on your Patreon. It needs to be multiple eggs, multiple baskets. Yeah, if you have that... Maybe Twitch isn't paying your bills, but if you have, you know, some money coming from Twitch, some's coming from YouTube, some's coming from TikTok, some's coming from your Kofi, like, then that that's how you begin to build a actual, like, income source and career. Um, I actually thought of an example um, that I think people might not know from Twitch mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> is what people's majority income source is when you're streaming and, like, what size it changes over the time. So um, it's actually... The income sources for a small streamer is usually subs and bits. Um, something for a mid-sized streamer is usually sponsorships. And then the giant, giant, huge streamers like Hassan or anything are actually ad money. Um, because they have so many viewers mm -hmm. that even just playing one ad gives them like a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think it really depends what level of your page is at, too. Um, but I would, I would say that's probably standard for, you know, if you want to do TikTok or something, like you're probably going to make a little, if once you join the ad program, you'll make some money off of that. But I would say the majority of smaller to medium sized people are probably making most money off of sponsorships mm -hmm. than anything. Mm hmm um, and if y'all are paying attention to my numbers, um, which is fine, because I think y'all should, if you see like somebody and uh, you're like, oh, okay, their, their, their number of followers and viewers is comparable to mine. Yeah, like I think you should pay attention. I think that's just fine. Um, I, I, I will say uh, Kofi is usually the bulk of my income per month. That is my Kofi shop as well as Kofi memberships. Uh, mm -hmm. Twitch comes pretty close though. Uh, and that's subs and bits, uh, and then, you know, donos and, uh, the stickers and all of that. Um, I don't do, uh, sponsorships. I've never done sponsorships. I, that's not a moral thing. It's just that sponsorships that I've seen for me are just complete dog shit. <laughs> uh, in the future, maybe, yeah, sure I will. But as of right now, I've never done one and I'd have no interest in it. But yeah, maybe when I, you know, maybe when it's different, um, I'll, I'll go into that for sure for sure in terms of like ads or anything like that no i don't care about it i think it's i think last month i got like ten dollars in ads it's mm -hmm. for, for for my size it doesn't make any sense um now yeah. i will say john who does a video game no art or anything like that 
He's really been pushing his TikTok and YouTube uh, for the past few months. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been pretty fucking nice because it's a little it's a little electric bill uh, money that we've been getting. And that's really nice. Uh, he's got 23,000 followers on TikTok. Mind you, followers do not equal views in any way, shape or form because mm -hmm. he's got plenty of videos where um, he'll he'll get like 300 views and then that's it just a flop video for whatever reason but then sometimes he's got he, he'll get a random 1 million um mm -hmm. but because he has more than 10,000 followers on tiktok he's in the creator um some creator uh, program or something like that mm -hmm. that gives him x amount of cents per thousand views um and then on youtube he's got i think he just hit 6,000 subscribers on youtube mm -hmm. and he had some animal crossing tutorial video uh animal crossing new horizons tutorial video that's been giving him a 30 dollar check every single month like Holy crap. which is really really nice um so stuff like that um he, he goes on this rant all the time because big 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 youtubers and streamers like to bitch about money but you can mm. figure out how much money they're making you can figure oh, it tons. out Millions, Hundreds. Yeah. yeah yeah it's ridiculous um so if you ever want like transparency or anything like that i'm one of those people that's like hey i think the world would be a lot better um if all employees like were honest with each other about how much they were actually getting paid because i feel like there is so much misinformation with how much money people are actually making on both sides of the spectrum that pixel artist that has a hundred thousand followers on twitter probably is even making a hundred bucks a month for sure for sure and then that streamer that has like you know hundred thousand viewers in their stream you might think like oh they, they make like 10k a month nope they're probably a millionaire like sure <laughs> like for sure both ends of the spectrum and I, I i it would be nice if we if we could be more honest and transparent about stuff like this because i i feel like it'd be um healthier i don't know where i was going with this anyways if we if we can find the the lucky lucky people are the people that can do whatever they want and they have the oilers <laughs> yeah so they they only have like 10 viewers at any time but they do have one person in their chat that literally gives them thousands of dollars a month mm, just mm. because they can mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. that, those are the lucky people they can they can just hang out and have a career because one person is paying their paycheck <laughs> yeah with that said sometimes you're in a stream and you're like wow they have a lot of viewers yeah it's it's it they could be doing bot follows they could be doing bot viewing all that bullshit so like not only look at the numbers but you know try and have honest conversations with people uh and then do your own little research uh you can look up like average um there's like a terminology for it but the average amount of money that youtube and tiktok pays out per 1000 views i forgot what the term is um but you can you can look that stuff up i think it's cpm yeah it's something like that technical I don't, I was purposely trying to avoid all these like business jargon mm -hmm, numbers. Mm -hmm. I can, I can talk about turn on investment and CPR and all these things. I, we're not going to, cause even I start yawning when I say that. Yeah. So. <laughs> I would say have multiple income sources if you can. That's, Absolutely. That, that is the true way to. Absolutely. To, and even like you were saying, even, even if your multiple income sources are just coffee and, but you have memberships and packages that you can give out that's that's multiple that even if it's one platform that's still multiple yep. ways to make money yep 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 100 percent um so yeah doing like asset packs and uh streams and then memberships and blah, blah blah absolutely encouraged um yes and to tie a little back a little into maggie's question so maggie said do you have any thoughts about growing without social media not asking for advice so much but have you seen anyone grow on twitch or youtube without any other social media presence the question extends to growth on art station and dvr but i know you don't have experience with those platforms says maggie mm -hmm. yeah i know why maggie's ask asking this because she doesn't do any social media. damn 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 uh, <laughs> And I don't blame her. It's fucking a hellscape to be on social media. It's a fucking hellscape. Um, how to grow without social media? Um, I'm gonna be blunt. It's gonna be harder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be way harder to blow up because you are completely relying on um, uh, the algorithm while you're live on Twitch or whatever you're doing to push you and. Um, you're relying on like word of mouth of like oh i really liked maggie's stream you guys should go watch her and i'm gonna share it with my friends so mm -hmm. um so instead of it's it's similar to the having multiple income sources having multiple 
sources for people to find you and, and engage with you is going to help your brand. It really is. Um, any tips specifically? Yeah, DeviantArt and ArtStation, I have zero experience with, so mm -hmm. I can't say. If, if you have anything on that side or feel None free, whatsoever. But, I wasn't yeah. even on DeviantArt when I was a kid. Um, yeah. And then I, there was like a resurgence. Um, I will say the DeviantArt space is very, very popular with furries. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you do furry art, furry commissions, things like that, you need to get on DeviantArt. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not in that space. Um, I'd like to, maybe eventually. Um, but I, I I need to learn a lot of I don't even know how to do like for textures I I have to like <laughs> learn a lot before I even get towards that mm -hmm. um so if you if you do furry art and furry commissions you should have been on DeviantArt a while ago you need to get on that shit ASAP uh in terms of ArtStation ArtStation is more so a portfolio platform where um if a potential uh uh our studio wants to hire you you're gonna point them towards your ArtStation rather than your fucking Twitter they don't need to see mm -hmm. your memes and shit trust me um <laughs> I don't have an art station because they started doing AI bullshit, blah, 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 blah. Um, but uh, in terms of having your own portfolio, yes, you should be having that 100%. Um, but you're not going, that that is not a, a thing for you to grow um, your Twitch from. People will not check out your, your portfolio and then check out your Twitch. If they're checking out your portfolio, it's because they want to hire you at their studio or hire you to make their game. Not because they give a shit about your, tw your Twitch. Sorry. Something, something I actually have been using because I am working on like a debut and trying to find artists for things um, out, outside of the ones we've named. I also have personally been using VGen to try to discover artists that I like and then also Skeb as well, which I know is like mostly Japanese artists in instead of mm -hmm. English speaking. But um, it's both of their uh, discoverabilities are better because they use keywords and then also um there are like twitters that are specifically for helping you find like scab artists that people think are fun to share if you want to like look up that's i know that's like not directly on scab mm -hmm, but like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah if there's discoverability in that sense too like sometimes sometimes self-promotion can also be good of like you go to those a lot of those like I don't know if they're necessarily bots. Sometimes they're bots, sometimes they're not. If, if, if you find like, oh, I'm learning a lot from this page sharing people's art stations, for example, and you're like, I want to also submit mine. Sometimes they have those open of like, hey, if you want to share a page that you think we should share on this page, DM us. So that might be a good way to also get your stuff out there. Mm, mm, mm. Um... Sorry, I'm just organizing y'all's questions because y'all have so many good questions. Um, shit, Maggie's talking about shadow banning. Mm -hmm. like yeah, so, I <laughs> so uh, Sam says, why do you think social media is a hellscape in a blunt and uncushioned terms <laughs> as possible? And I was reading that and then thinking about Maggie's question about the shadow banning. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let, let's start with Sam's question first, maybe. I want to hear your, I feel like you were going to have the most passionate rant about why social media is a hellscape, but I'd love to hear it. <laughs> um, oh God, I'll try and keep it as short and concise as possible. It's, uh, it's a product of capitalism and products of capitalism, um, are not going to have people's best interest in mind. Uh, people are going to be treated as machines and artists are going to be treated as machines. And that just in of itself is dog water. Um... Uh, so algorithm aside, it's a bunch of people, it's, it's, it's like a dog eat dog world kind of platform. And then people just, I don't know, get super nasty because they've got that mask of anonymity and basic psychology tells you that people are on their worst behavior when nobody knows who they are. Um, you add on to that. Um, you also add on to the fact that people can make money based on how many clicks they get. And therefore there's going to be a huge spike in shock content and very triggering content. Um, and it, that is Twitter, that is TikTok, that is every fucking platform. Um, and it, 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 uh, uh, dog shit. It's a, it's a bunch of dog shit. That's, <laughs> I can't, I can't, go, that's it. It's as simple as that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dive into politics on here because I don't think that's good for anyone's mental health right now but like um, there are people that will post 
certain views, whether they believe it or not, yep. purely because they know they can make money off of people retweeting it and commenting on it, yep. and then that blows up their stuff. And yeah, once once you add the Twitter pays you money to get things to pop off, or TikTok pays you money to get things pop off, then you have to realize, oh. This is just rage bait. Yep. <laughs> this is this is literally just so they are making a ton of money off of people getting mad at them. Hundred um, percent. Yeah, I social media. It is very very hard to keep your sanity if you do it, especially if you do it for a job, because you have to look at feeds constantly and you have to go through comments of people saying the most. I didn't even know you could say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> comments. Um, it, and to it's tie very very hard. And Go to ahead. tie back earlier, that, that that's where you come into play. You have to curate your space. You have to fucking block people. You have to mute terms. You have to do this. You have to do that. Blah 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 blah. Um, that is the only way where you can start thriving. Social media used to be a source of mental stress for me. It's not anymore. I just started blocking a bunch of people. I have so many blocked terms and blocked accounts. Uh, there's so many people that can't even see my fucking content and they'll never be able to see it. It's as simple as that. So, social media started, you know, with like MySpace, GeoCities, and Facebook, which are all just like, here's me. Here's my personal stuff. I'm just trying to talk to my friends. I'm trying to meet new people is literally supposed to be just a socializing space. That's yeah. why it's called social media. And now it is completely just people selling you shit, people trying to make people mad about things, people trying to start arguments. And yep. it's like, so, but when you curate your space, exactly what you're talking about, you can curate it to become uh, a safer space that you're just like hanging out, talking to your friends and all that. Yep. Randos are going to come in to find it no matter what. But yep. um, yeah. You have you have to do in the work unfortunately and uh you have to wade through a lot of bullshit, um and you but it sucks but practice makes perfect the longer you are on social media the better you get at um curating your space and utilizing those tools there's still people that don't know oh what i could schedule tweets like duh <laughs> you've been able to do that for years like you start learning um all, all these little tools that you have at your in, in your arsenal to uh make your experience a lot better sam says do you ever worry about missing out on income due to curating your space um I get, again, I think this is a better question for you, honestly. I, I can't answer, but... Uh, no, Sam. I block <laughs> so many fucking people. I don't, I don't like going on my stream and then, like, shit-talking a bunch of people and, like, name-dropping and all of that. So if you know who I'm referring to, do not say their name, please. Um, but there are so many streamers on Twitch.tv that I will never raid, and I will never shut them out, and we will never go into their space. And I am telling you, it has not made a dent in my income. Like, focus on curating your space, curating a safe space. Focus on uh moderating your space and making sure that it's healthy and that you're not burning yourself out or driving yourself insane with uh anxiety and stress and all of that by appealing to these fucking wackos um <laughs> for every person that you block you'll find another person that is better in your space and probably more suited for exactly. whatever you're making exactly eight billion people on this planet people. yeah yeah <laughs> don't worry about it literally don't worry about it and and don't think like oh my god if i block this person if i never rate this person if i never collab with this person i won't be open to these opportunities not not true it's just not true I'm telling you right now Del delete them from your digital space and also delete them from your mental space stop yep. thinking about them they yep. don't deserve your brain waves <laughs> 100%. Kind of ties into uh, Maggie's question because I have a bit of a response uh, from a uh, from a uh, onlooker POV, whereas I think you'll have a, a, a POV, obviously, from the analytical uh, mm -hmm. side. She says, do you have any knowledge to share on shadow banning across any platform? In my time on Twitter, I found most of the time people thought they were shadow banned and they weren't. And I think it's because the term is so nebulous and differs between platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to start with your side first and then? Um, so I don't know the actual, uh, shadow banning, uh, terms and all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I immediately think of a certain person and we're not going to name them a certain person that kept making all these tweets and blah, blah, blah. I don't understand why, why my stream isn't growing. I don't understand. I don't understand. Blah, 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 blah. I do this. I do that. Blah, blah, blah. On paper. Everything they're doing is right. They're doing the social media. They're doing this. They're doing that, blah, blah, blah. And I got curious one day. I was like, huh, man, they 
do such good content. How come they're not bigger? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I check out their stream and I'm like, oh, it's because you're kind of a piece of shit and you're really rude to people and like you're <laughs> you're really unkind. You can be the smartest and and I think like if this was the last five minutes of this collab stream, uh, we could wrap up with this statement because you could sit here and be an expert on social media, but if you are a piece of shit, like, I'm sorry, but you will eventually cause your own downfall. You absolutely will, eventually. Like, or you're just gonna have a community filled with other pieces of shit and then wonder why you're miserable and you hate streaming. Um, you could know all of these little social media tips and tricks, but if you're just straight up unkind um, and people just dislike you, um, because you are kind of hostile and malicious, don't expect them to raid you. Don't expect them to ever retweet your art. Don't expect them to ever want to do anything to do with you or recommend clients to you or anything like that, because why the hell would they, genuinely? Yeah, you were talking about, so there's a bunch of, if you want to get like super detailed about shadow banning, I'm going to talk specifically about Twitter, but there's, there's different terms for every single platform. Um, there's shadow banning, um, which means like, People that even follow you probably won't see your stuff. Um, there's search suggestion ban, meaning that if people like try to find your page, it'll be hard for them to see it. Um, and there's like deboosting, which is like means even if you post stuff, um, it just won't be shown to the general public as well. Um, you can check these things to see if your page is like it's it's, it's literally just search uh, "Am I shadow banned?" on Google, and you can put in your name and see if you're shadow banned. Um, it's not hard to know if you truly are or not. Um, there's a lot of reasons you could be shadow banned, um, and some are your fault. So if you have been banned on Twitter, it's probably unlike less likely to show you in other people's feeds because it thinks you're not as quality as a person. And there's things that probably aren't your fault because I know a lot of people on Twitter right now that are like NSW, um, NSFW, artists are getting a lot less views right now because you know elon again um but uh there's yeah i think a lot of people like to use that as an excuse mm -hmm. for um why their stuff isn't popping off I and agree. it generally maybe you are shadow banned and yeah that sucks um but generally it's more so because um you're not interesting or good or people just generally don't like you and aren't interacting with your things i don't know there's 100%. usually something bigger to it than just oh twitter thinks i shouldn't be shown and i can't do anything yeah. about it it's happened uh, quite a few times in the cafe dot uh social media growth thread um where people are like yeah i think i'm shadow banned can anybody check and i'm like hey i checked <laughs> Um, why do you not. think you're, why do you think you're shadow banned? Oh, because my pop, my posts, my art never pops off. First of all, you're not shadow banned. I checked, you can check yourself, blah, blah. Second of all, I'll tell you why. It's because I had to scroll for 300 minutes straight in order to actually get to your art because you keep spamming the same anime gif under people's tweets because you think it's funny. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't, I have to like try so hard to find your art. You're not shadow banned. You're just dog shit at Twitter. Stop doing that. Like, what are you doing? Like, good <laughs> Did God. Did you know that even we reply to people that also shows in your like, yep. follower speeds? Just, just be careful out there, folks. Be careful. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Sam says, last question on this topic. Have you ever considered writing, recording, or sharing your experience in what I'm understanding as overcoming FOMO? Mm. Concerning social media. FOMO. Uh, I'm trying to understand the question here. FOMO of what, I guess? Hmm. Like, what, are, what do you feel like you're missing out on? And if they want to answer that, feel free. Yeah, but. Sam says, so follow-up question then, do you ever worry about missing out on income, income due to curating space? We said no. Uh, then he said, last question on the topic, have you ever... Got, hmm. Yeah, clarify clarify that. The, FOMO, the fear of missing out on income. On income? But... Uh... Uh, oh, do you mean like the anxiety of possible FOMO on income? Because I, I'm a firm believer that you're not missing out on any income by curating your space. So I wouldn't get FOMO because I don't believe I'm missing out on anything in the first place. Question mark? Yeah. I think I if that if that is also this the question, which I Sam has has asked us questions about like blocking people and stuff. So I, I also think that's the direction. Um, 
if it's FOMO of income from people that you've blocked, it's not their money isn't worth it anyways, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, they will probably not be a good person to work with or to commission in the future. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of artists that I've talked behind the scenes um, that have been like, oh, I don't know if I want to commission this person. They're like asking a lot from me. It's like they're probably also gonna be incredibly hard to work with down the line as well i don't know why you want to I, I obviously like sometimes you have a choice because like that's your income right but like um i don't know i i just feel like if they're difficult to work with now that's probably not going to change even because they're going to ask for a million changes or they're going to come up with your commission and just not be happy with like the final result i don't know it's probably not worth the brain space on it yeah, I agree. Um, I do have a specific story that kind of like loosely applies to this and probably doesn't really answer your question, Sam, but maybe there is some value in it. But about two years ago, I got hired um, for somebody, a game dev, to make a bunch of uh, assets for their game. I am under NDA, so I can't show you, um, unfortunately. But uh, they were a pain in the ass to work with. It was extremely stressful. I had to cancel so many streams because of deadlines. So that was me just not being able to grow my streams and grow my community. Um, I couldn't really work on my own art or do my own commissions or anything like that because I was just so busy. So I was losing a source of income because I wasn't doing commissions. And I was losing a source of sanity because I wasn't doing my own personal art. It wasn't good for my mental health. Long story short, the money was paying some bills. Um, the game's probably never going to get released. And all of the assets that I made aren't getting, they're not getting used. Oops. Uh, everything got scrapped. So was it worth it? No, it wasn't. It absolutely wasn't. So I think um, you have, so in order to like get over that FOMO of lost income, I think you have to first start with getting over the fact that it probably wasn't FOMO in the first place. It probably wasn't. So um, my, from my professional side, um, as a, as a marketer, I've had people reach out to me, like recruiters that are like, um, here, we would like to hire you. Here's significantly more money that you make at your normal job, but you know, it's for like NFT things or like AI things sure. that I don't agree with and don't want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be nice to double my income for sure, but like the guilt in in and uh, uninterest. Oh my god. When I, my first job out of college, I was just like one of those like cubicle workers that looks at spreadsheets all day. Um, yeah, I made more money than my other job, but I was like so brain dead and hated <laughs> being there at all times. Yeah. I quit within six months because I just was so miserable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's better to do whatever feels best for you. And if it's blocking people, that's, yeah. that's what you got to do. Also, consider the loss of income when you eventually go on. Uh, OK, now that I'm almost saying out loud, it's going to sound like I'm throwing daggers your way, Sam, but I <laughs> promise I'm not. I'm just speaking very broadly uh, and generally it wasn't meant to apply to you. But uh, consider the loss of income when you eventually go on a hiatus because of how uh, detrimental it was for your mental health and uh, how uh, burnt out you got. Uh, I have seen so many amazing streamers and artists that are just on a break and they're still on a break because they got so burnt out. I mean, consider how much they were making per month and how they're just not making that because they're just gone. They're offline. So burnout is so real. <laughs> <laughs> and it hits you harder than you think it's actually hitting you or like oh i'm just tired no it's you are completely done and you should be going on vacation and you should be taking care of your own personal health and, and mentality it's so fucking important that's that's also the major reason why i'm like we can give you all these social media best tips but at the end of the day whatever is like best for your actual mm -hmm. health is gonna be uh, that takes the, priority the major tip yeah yep. absolutely sam says to clarify a ton of people on social media prioritize views etc over curating their own space what i'm getting at is uh have you ever considered formally sharing your advice on the ladder mm, on the ladder of curating <laughs> i i promise i'm really trying to read your questions sam no, no, I, no. I think i think i'm an idiot and not reading them correctly <laughs> i think um i think i understand i mm. think let me just scroll up because you said earlier. Have you ever considered writing, recording, or sharing your experience in, in all of this? I think for me personally, 
this is as far as I would go. Um, mm -hmm. I would not ever go on Twitter.com and write up my twit longer about how Twitter.com is dog shit because I know I'll get <laughs> flamed to hell and back, right? It's like walking into a circus and saying, yeah, there's way too many monkeys in here. Like, yeah, they're all jumping on you. Like, sorry, you're done for. You're bananas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I would only ever talk shit talk this much about all these platforms in my own space. I would not mm -hmm. uh, throw it out into the world because I don't want to deal with it. Maggie's saying they had talked about writing a book. Um, mm, mm, mm. It's it's the reason I wouldn't have just like a written guide for how to do these things is because um, what we were talking about before, like algorithms change perpetually. And so even if I was to write like a whole hundred page plus book of here's what you should do on your social media, it would be outdated in a few months. <laughs> so, so I do, I believe also Sutter that like, this is the best way to share our information is to take questions and also talk about anything we've seen recently mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that worked because anything that I was doing for discovery in 2016 probably isn't what I would be doing now for a social media page in 2024. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Uh, I agree, I agree. Uh, Chris asked about collabing. How would you recommend opening channels of communication with people that you want to collab with? Mm -hmm. Um, solder just DM me. <laughs> so. Do you guys want to know the actual strat? Okay, listen, take out your pencils. And if they're not out already, what have you been doing for like two hours, 45, 46 minutes? You make a joke. Oh my God, Maggie, wouldn't it be so fucking cool if we did like a collab where we just talked about, uh, Yakuza? <laughs> just kidding. You gotta wait. Wait until Maggie's like, no, actually, that would be cool. No. Okay, jokes aside, jokes aside. I think uh, people online get so weird about just open, honest communication. Um, so you have to give people an out. Um, at, do not go into a stream, for example, and say, hey, Sari, do you want to collab? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm pushed into a corner. I have two options right not just two but i only I'm, I'm limited on my options because i feel nervous that if i say uh no why are you asking me that in stream see that's really bitchy isn't it no solder that's just you being honest yum 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 but you know how it is when women are online and honest and they say no you know how it is right mm. so now i have to like awkwardly be like oh let, let's talk about that in dms ha 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 and i'm just gonna feel like dog shit and awkward the whole stream because i know my fake laugh was really really fucking fake and i know other people heard it and i know i'm gonna get a dm from somebody that's like oh my god that was so cringe when that happened i'm like yeah it was and then i did like keep streaming that was really fucking cringe yeah anyways um so real talk real talk i think um casually mentioning it casually joking and then just just seeing how they react and if somebody reacts positively shoot them a dm and be like hey i was joking but it seems like you're interested would you want to do something like that? And if they say no, then they say no. If they say yes, then they say yes. I think that's honestly like a great strat, truth be told. Yeah, I think this is also one of the things that feels easier to me than it is for most people, because I've noticed, you can tell me if you've noticed too, a lot of people, especially in these art spaces or smaller streamer spaces, are incredibly anxious little beans. Yeah. That are terrified to go talk to other people and collab. And you know what? I understand. I understand trying to trying to collab, especially with people that you haven't like had a ton of direct interaction with is, is it could be scary. It's, yeah. it's like it's like trying to put yourself. It's like going to uh, a convention to meet people and like walking up to your favorite person. Right. It, it's that's it takes a lot of guts to do, even if, even if it seems like such a simple interaction. Mm -hmm, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it but it also does get easier the more you do it, too. Mm -hmm. Like. I'm, I'm not scared to go to people and like, hey, we should do something. But I also think that's not the best strategy for everyone. Um, if if you see someone that you like, I would say the best thing to do is to get involved in their community first. Don't just like immediately go to a streamer they have never talked to and be like, hey, let's do something. And it's like, no, they probably won't. But if you are an active person in the community, if they see you around, and then you're also like, hey, it'd be really fun. I think you were an expert. This is this is basically what Sarah did of like, hey, I know P2 that you were an expert in social media marketing. Would you like to come talk about that? Um, that is more likely to open the gate than like, hey, 
we should do something together. And then you don't give them like why you don't give them what you should do together. You don't give them like give give you give you guys a little mutual ground um, where you can meet and, and agree on doing something. And then hopefully that works out for you. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out for you, I promise the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to be like, no, I just don't feel like doing that or no, not at this time, but maybe in the future, like it's probably not going to end up in like them blocking you if you're asking kindly and also trying to respect their space mm -hmm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the same thing can be applied on twitter if you want to ask uh an artist that you really really like hey do you, would you want to do like an art trade or something like that maybe that shouldn't be the first time you ever fucking talk to them like maybe maybe <laughs> you should slide in their dms and be like hey i really like that art that you posted see if they respond oh hey thank you so much blah blah oh yeah yeah so you're into star trek oh that's so cool yum 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 <laughs> have a little bit of a rapport for the love of god and like comment on some of their stuff and they comment on some of your stuff and then maybe joke about it maybe slightly you know subtly hint at it and then see what their reaction is and then go from there mm -hmm. try to um it, it it's hard to put a human face and being to all the especially when it's like you know a vtuber's face thing because it's like it feels it feels like a character over a human being but um yeah. try to put a human spin on it and make it make you seem relatable and not like an insane crazy person and i'm sure it'll probably go out pretty okay <laughs> it'll probably be fine uh momo asked uh and i feel like that this kind of ties to it because i feel like you know when people are like oh my god i'm so i'm so socially awkward i'm scared to ask people for a collab like yeah we're all on twitch right this is not like i'm sorry but this is like nerd club central like it's like going to a D, &D convention and being like yeah i have social anxiety no shit what a fucking joke like are you joking come on like we get it we're all artists we have low self-esteem and we're all anxious moving on right so You're telling we, me everyone at anime expo are nerds yeah right so we're all nervous to make all of these mistakes on social media and make these mistakes and bad etiquette moves on twitch.tv uh and twitter and all that good stuff momo asked um uh, uh you mentioned working for some big companies were you ever there during some company drama or scandal i feel like there is a permanence to the internet that scares some from making mistakes so i don't know how comfortable you are yeah. with answering this question for sure do whatever is com um, comfy yeah, I won't comment on the company's decisions because, frankly, I that's like, you know, an executive level decision that I had no part in and had no voice in. So I can't do that. I think the one that comes up a lot, people, I worked for Crunchyroll and people ask me about, um, you know, paying subtitlers and stuff, which I know is like a big drama thing. I, I did not work directly with the subtitlers at all, so I don't know what they're actually paid or if they're happy or not happy. I have no fucking clue. Um, yeah, when it comes to big company stuff, I don't know. You can you can have a voice in them, but especially, you know, working for Netflix or Warner or anything, those companies are thousands of people. Um, and so if you think every single person there knows what's going on or that their voice is being heard, <laughs> that's crazy. That's that's not happening. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, trying to think of like any examples I can share. And even when I was staff at Twitch, I was vocal about maybe I didn't like straight up shout out, hey, this was a stupid idea. Why the fuck did Twitch do this? But like. I was very vocal about um, decisions that I liked and disliked. I thought when they added the shout out command, that's awesome. Um, when they allowed tagging in, in the name of the stream, that's awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's some good ideas. And then there's some things that like, I'm not gonna use examples because I don't like them, but there's things that Twitch did while I worked there. I was like, why the who the fuck is asking for this? No one, why did we do this? Why did yeah. we dedicate resources to this? Um, yeah, there's you can disagree with your boss. That's completely valid things yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I do think Momo is at their day job, but so I'm I'm taking a stab in the dark. You say, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like there's a permanence to the internet that scares some from making mistakes. If you are maybe hinting at getting hashtag cancelled on twitter.com um or hashtag canceled via a twit longer google doc because of something fucked up you said on uh, uh on on stream or you made a really nasty tweet um listen i, I i've said some stupid shit before um <laughs> in fact i'll be 100 percent transparent i accidentally said a uh indigenous 
is it a slur? I, I said the, I said a wrong word for uh, referring to an indigenous group. And then somebody in chat was like, hey, don't fucking say that. Uh, that's not the right word. You need to you need to Google it right now. And I was like, oh shit, I Google it. I'm like, oops, that's that. Yep, oops, somebody like I keep hearing that word and I always hear that word even on TV. So that's why I always say it. That wasn't correct. Really sorry about that, guys. My bad. Um, and then like an hour went by wrapped up stream and then I made a post on my discord and I said hey I made a mistake oopsie daisy um shouldn't have said that blah 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 I think owning up to your mistake and apologizing like you you, you gotta do what you gotta do it fucking sucks it's uncomfortable but you do what you gotta do I feel like a lot of people uh that have like the toy longers and all that bullshit it is a repetitive pattern of making nasty mistakes they never own up to it they never say sorry they never change their behavior like so i think people see like oh my god everybody is is telling this person to fuck off and delete their account and that's so scary but like okay well for those people they, maybe they deserve it. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe they deserve it uh if you're a good person and you try your best to be a good person and you try your you try your best to be educated and learn every single day you don't need to worry about this the, the, mm -hmm. don't worry about this the, don't don't worry about that unless you're saying something that is you could probably actually be sued for like slander or misogyny uh, i don't i don't want to go into anything that would trigger sure. people but like sure. um if unless it's that bad you're not gonna get canceled and yeah. exactly i completely agree there's there's times where like even myself i'm not I'm I I'm a white male <laughs> who who is very straight passing. It's like it's it's I don't know everything that happens in uh, uh, other people's spaces. And yep. I don't know the terms I should know, and I don't know. And I'm actively trying to. It's, it's not like I'm I'm actively trying to interrogate people and, and cause problems. But sometimes I don't say the right things, or I don't know the terms, or I don't know what I should know um so i would say owning up to it is a good great thing um i think that works really really well for anyone that's like um a big celebrity and they accidentally made a mistake by saying something it's just like oh i didn't know this sorry i will be i'll be better those are the ones those are the apologies that i think are are better than the people that are like oh i said this thing uh i i and they try to make like 10 million excuses for why they did it yeah. rather than just being straight up like Oop, I made a mistake. I, I now know that's a problem. I won't do that in the future. Versus the people that are like, oops, I made a mistake. Here's all the reasons I did that. Here's some reasons why I still think I should do that. <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah, yeah. It's not an apology. You're just trying to cover your tracks at that point. Yeah. I think people see the viral tweets where it's a Google Doc and it's, oh my God, my experience with P2. And it's 96 <laughs> pages of all the fucked up things he said. But I am telling you, if you're a decently good person, you wouldn't have 96 pages of bullshit <laughs> right yeah. for some we had a fucking yeah. document the and i think people see that and they're like oh my god what if that happens to me one day it's probably never going to happen to you if you at least put in a, an ounce of effort in being a kind person and learning so you don't need to worry about that don't even worry about it <laughs> to roast me too. always that's all that's what we're here for texas come on now texas is one of my mods too so they can <laughs> <laughs> it's encouraged <laughs> Uh, also, Blue, welcome on in. Once is an accident, twice is being careless, three times is a pattern. Yeah, and like, I, <laughs> listen, every time I see those little Google Docs and twit longers about other streamers and blah, 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 I always read them because I'm, I'm always mm -hmm. curious and I want to educate myself. And, you know, I have learned certain things like, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. It's always like a hundred fucking pages and it's shit that, been, that they've been doing for three years straight. Like it is hundreds of mistakes. Like it is, no, come on, that, that that's their personality, that's right? That's the other side is if they are doing apologies and as their entire feed is that they're always apologizing, apologizing for something that probably tells you <laughs> that yeah. they're not actually sorry. <laughs> yeah. I committed a continuous lapse of judgment for the past seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, uh, we actually have one question left. Well, we have two questions. Sam, you said, how valuable do you think it is to post things that are only tangentially related to your main thing as a way to drum up followers, etc.? We actually did talk about that earlier in the stream. Uh, like, uh, you'll have, like, something that goes viral and has nothing to do with your art or music or anything like that. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna start attracting the normie crowd that doesn't give a fuck about your art or your music. Uh, they're just there for the viral tweet, for the viral TikTok. Um... If you're trying to do that on purpose, purpose, I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea. Me, po me personally. This actually reminded me. It's not exactly the question, but this also reminded me. Um, the people that uh, we had talked about earlier about retweeting your own things, and that's definitely a great strategy for for doing it. Another thing could be just commenting <clears throat> on your own thing. So I've seen artists that are like. They post something and then like a few hours later will be like hey thanks for the hundred likes like that's perfectly a valid strategy of just being like kind to your community um and when you comment on it that reshares the main post a bit more too so that's a strategy um and then we do have a final question from fang uh and then we are gonna wrap up this bad boy fang says any thoughts on growing a community discord server mm -hmm. I feel like you're better at Discord than I am, for sure. Um, Your Discord's always popping off whenever I check it. So. so you say any thoughts on growing a community Discord. You're not saying any tips mm -hmm. on it. So I'm not going to go into tips. Uh, in terms of, of a community Discord, I think it's very, very much encouraged and should be encouraged uh, because social media is so volatile. Um, it is nice to be able to connect with people in case Twitter shuts down one day or, or this or that. And because it, it really sucks, like just losing contact with a bunch of people because you didn't have them on other websites. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's great. I think it's encouraged. However, only if it's like sustainable for you and it's healthy for you. If running your own Discord server, your community Discord server is going to stress you the hell out, then don't do it. I didn't have a Discord server for the first six months of streaming. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't feel like it impacted my growth, but honestly, how much was I really fucking growing in the first six months of streaming anyways? <laughs> um, but I don't know, it sucked, like, because people want to connect with you. P2 was saying earlier that, uh, you know, every year the top category on Twitch.tv is just chatting because people want to socialize on social media websites, duh. Um, so I feel, I don't know, being able to connect with peeps off Twitch is really really nice however if you don't have enough spoons for that then don't fucking do it and that's my uh, pov just discord is always active and awake so it's hard it's a lot of mental capacity to moderate a discord because you literally have to be checking it constantly mm -hmm. um which is why i also have moderators and i also have bots that will you know if someone says some shitty things they'll just immediately kick them out um Discords are tough because I think they're super, super great for community because that is an incredible place for people that are watching and want to talk to each other to just have a space that is only for people that want to interact in that one space. Um, at the same time, it's difficult to keep up with because um, especially super, super active discords because i can't <laughs> i my my discord is less active and i try to comment on everything and try to engage with people and try to post on there i think you should i think the streamer should be in there the content creator should be in your discord posting things um but i don't think you need to be commenting on every single thing in there and sometimes just let community manager community members just you know hang out and chat and just do their own thing and you don't have to be like the helicopter parent that's just there like you guys are doing such a good job i love your art i think it's fun mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes it's just a space to do it but i i completely agree discord a uh, discord is not for everyone um and especially if your discord you feel like it's dead and that's sometimes really discouraging to you specifically when you think people should be commenting in there more um I don't know. It's another mental health talk in that space too. <laughs> but, um, 
I also think to tie back to a couple of things that we were saying before, all of these services and platforms have tools for you to utilize. Uh, if you really, 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 really want to have a community discord, but you feel like it's going to be too much for you, do a little bit of research in some of the tools available. Uh, ask some streamers some questions. Uh, me personally, I do not like being on discord 24 fucking seven. So I have, mm -hmm. a, I have a bunch of stuff blocked. Uh, you can't even join the VC and have your mic on. Can't even do that because mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that i'm not get. i'm not dealing with a dm that's like oh maggie said something really mean to me but i wasn't recording again. it and i have no proof yeah again mm -hmm. um but i wasn't recording our vc and i have no proof i'm not fucking dealing with that i'm not dealing with it oops um you can't even join my discord server until, unless you get x amount of channel points to redeem it uh and then you can't even post your twitch channel unless i specifically give you the role for it because i'm not spending all goddamn day checking people and making sure they're not I'm, I'm not doing it right so definitely utilize the tools uh to help you um make sure that it's sustainable and good for your mental health um but if it's just not then no worries fuck it who cares I agree. Your art sucks, Maggie. Twenty twenty four. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, gamers, I think we can go ahead and wrap up this bad boy. Dare we? Hell yeah. Dare Hell we? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm done talking to you guys. Yeah, Shut up. Fuck <laughs> you, uh, guys. If you're not following P two already, please do so. Um, he might or might not be streaming later. Question mark. I might. I might have had a computer whoopsie so we'll see if i'm streaming tonight or not mm -hmm, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh if not tonight next time maybe tuesday mm -hmm. maybe thursday we'll see how it is uh p2's a lovely guy if you if three hours didn't convince you then you're a lunatic um <laughs> uh, and great streams want, great vibes i just want to say thank you for having me Sutter. this was really fun and then chat uh, literally every single question was very thoughtful and and provoking and i had a lot of fun talking to you all P2, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here. I appreciate the hell out of you. Really? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Did you want me to find someone to... Yeah, yeah. If you've got a friend that you'd like us to meet, we can absolutely raid on over. Guys, for our uh, raid call, um, P2, your little... Uh, your profile picture... Are, mm, are you like an animal? Or should I say zookeeper? Or what's the my, vibe? My, my, when I do my VTuber stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there'll be there'll be lore to it. I have not. I purposely have not talked about it. Okay. Yet, okay. But he's a he's a little guy. He's a little fella. Yeah, Texas. Thank you so much for the hundred bits. So we'll say aliens and zookeepers <laughs> are studying can, social media. Huh? Uh huh. You can you can do stoat. I've, I've oh stoat. Okay stoat. okay. Yeah. I was like oh wait, was it an otter? It's a stoat. Okay aliens and stoats. <laughs> stoats are so cute. Um, you want to raid someone who's a little bit smaller, but I love hanging out with them. Oh yeah, I don't I don't care. What what let's whatever do, you prefer. Let's do Moss. You're also the other channel. Yeah, I think I just dropped a follow when you shouted them out, but this will be my first time actually being in their channel, so that's yeah. great. Moss is, Moss is a also an artist, so you'll have fun over there too. Uh, let me just do these raid calls. Uh, if you're a sub, you can get that one with uh, Archit's noted email. If not, you can get that one with the cute little hearts. Uh, da, 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 da. It is Moss VT. Let me shout out just in case y'all get left behind because it's been happening a lot lately. Thanks, Twitch. Yeah. Someone tell staff to fix that. Yeah, I'm cringe. <laughs> uh, okay, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.